Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order November 15th, 5.30 p.m. at Memorial Town Hall. Uh, under announcements, I, I've been asked by um, some, of the, some of the vets and um, the Legion and, and on behalf of the board and the town to, to uh, go ahead and publicly thank uh, Buster Szymanski and his crew for once again putting all the flags out uh, in honor of Veterans Day. So uh, we just wanted to publicly thank Buster on behalf of the American Legion, the veterans, and, and, and the and town. And, and Lenny, uh, and everybody involved in it. Um, <laughs> I, and along those lines, not to digress, I happen to be in New Orleans oh. over, <laughs> over Veterans Day and oh. visited the World War II Museum, which was absolutely phenomenal. So if any of you ever get to New Orleans, it is incredible. So. Uh, uh, we also have Luminarium coming up in December, on December 17th, um, that's a Sunday, Sunday before Christmas Eve. So Luminarium will be uh, that particular evening. Uh, there'll be more to follow on that, um, but uh, we hope everybody can come down to Town Hall and, and join us before all the floats and fun start after, uh, after Santa arrives. Uh, Cindy or Ed or Marlene, does anybody have any announcements, public announcements? That we did announce uh, that the Veterans Day service was on the 11th, and mm -hmm. there was actually there was more people there this year, so that right. was nice. Good, good. Ed, you have anything to? Uh... No, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Oh. <laughs> right, <laughs> next week. We should have very best. It, it came upon us quickly, so <laughs> all right, agreed. All right, uh, so that's it for public forum. Um, excuse me for announcements. Uh, now we'll move into public forum. Is there somebody here or anybody here that wants to speak during the public forum portion? that isn't on the agenda? Okay. Um, we have the minutes here from October 25th, if there's a motion to accept those. I think it was the 26th, right? No? I'm looking at the date on the... Uh, it was, I believe we did move the 25th. Okay. Uh, yes, I move to um, accept the minutes of October's meeting. All right, is there a second? I'll second. Is there any um, corrections or changes that anybody noticed need to be made or any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good job, Lynn Dunnies. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, uh, for posted business, topic number one on the agenda is uh, Black Birch Winery. Yes. Are you here, sir? Yeah. All right, why don't you, if you don't mind, if you could just, you know, sure. an announce your name and, and um, um, hi, my name is Ian um, Modesto. I am one of the owners of Black Birch Vineyard. Okay. Yeah, I think you guys have met, uh, at least listened to my wife. Yes. I uh, was here. Yeah, I was unable to make yeah. that. I apologize. That's okay. A few weeks um, ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, and um, I'm here to just discuss, um, you guys uh, issued a um, pouring permit uh, uh, for um, Black Birch <coughs> Vineyard for my uh, business uh, on Straits Road. Mm -hmm. And um, I am just would like to discuss a little bit about the the cost of that permit and if yeah, just a little bit to discuss a little bit about the cost okay. of the permit. All right. Um, the permit is, it's tw I th if I understand correctly, it's 1200 a year? A thousand. A thousand. Oh, it's a thousand. Yep. Oh, that's right. We yeah. changed that. Yeah. Um, and so uh, the, uh, my concern is just that this, the pouring permit allows me to pour glasses of wine for my customers. Um, at my winery, generally, we, we sell uh, bottles of wine, we sell merchandise, and we sell glasses of wine. The glasses of wine makes up a very small portion of what I, what we do at the winery. Um, we're not geared for that. Uh, in other words, we, I'm not establishing this business to sell glasses of wine. It's not. It's very different than let's take a um, a restaurant where they. That's basically what they do. Most restaurants serve glasses of wine, even though you can get bottles of wine, but that's mm -hmm. few and far between. For my business, it's the complete opposite. Um, and so, um, yeah, I just think that the $1,000 fee is a little high for what I'm doing and the how often I'm doing it. The, the hours that are stated on this permit, we actually filed for a, an all-encompassing permit, if you will. Basically, the hours uh, are from uh, stated on the permit are from uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and that, those hours coincide with the... Uh, farm uh, winery permit, farm winery permit that I have with the uh, state. 
Um, but they, those were just, we, we filed for those hours just to give us the most flexibility. We are not open at 8 o'clock. Uh, we are open from 12 to 6, um, from Friday to Sunday. We're not open during the week. So really, we're, we're only open three days. Um, we might change this in the future, and that's why we set it up as, you know, as is. But it's not our, um, currently we're not, I don't see us opening uh, on Monday or Tuesday. It's just we can't do it right now. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I. So, so, so your, your reason for being here is just see if there could be a reduced fee yeah. in the, yeah. the $1,000 um, yearly license yeah. fee. So, and also, yeah, and also the yearly license fee where we have a yearly license pouring permit, but that's just to give us the flexibility if we're going to be open yearly. Uh, I, we are, will be open guaranteed till the end of this year, but I don't know if we're going to be open in from uh, January, February, March, or even April. Okay. So we're based, we are operating seasonally with a annual license. Okay. Rather than getting a seasonal license than having to get a annual license, sure. it just allows us greater flexibility. Um, so I, that's, yeah. Okay. All right. And I just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'd just like to discuss the fee and yeah. if that's what you guys initially envisioned with that fee. I know uh, Linda did most of that work. <clears throat> I, I just don't know what what you guys have to say about sure. that. I, did, does anybody have a comment to make before? Well, I I'm do, just or? wondering okay. what your actual plans are for the year. Are, are you definitely going to be seasonal? Or are you only going to go so many months? Or are you going to change your hours? Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I can't say. I, I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea. Oh. And that's why I, I understand that this is a yearly and I, we, we set that up as such. Um, it was set up as an annual license. Yeah. Currently it is yeah. an annual license. Yeah. <clears throat> it is, right. Yeah. I mean, would, would you be committing uh, tonight saying that I definitely will not be uh, doing anything like January, February, March and uh, or are you ready to commit to? Yeah, no, I, yeah. Or? I, I, I'm not, I'm not, because I think I, we, we have to assess things at the end of the year and see how things go. I literally don't even know how I'm going to plow the driveway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Simple logistic things like that. I, I, I don't even know how I'm going to deal with that. Um, so even within the yearly license, however, the, the hours as stated, the Monday through, uh, we most definitely were, the way I, not most definitely, I hate to use that word, um, but I don't see us being open the entire week. We're literally open on the weekends. That's when we get most traffic uh, during the week in the winter is for a, a farm winery is really, for most farm wineries, uh, even in the Finger Lakes where they do much greater business, it's, it's hard to be open during those hours and be actually sustainable. That that was one of my questions, but um, what I don't what I don't quite what I'm not quite following. Okay, it's a yearly license, and I believe we prorated it for the last two months. Yep, yes, yes, okay. yes. Thank you. Yes, I understand. Yeah, was... we can't go to hourly if that's what you're looking at with the hours. It's no, I'm not know, trying with um. I'm not following. How how are you proposing? There's a reduction and. Well, a fee, it's is not on a yearly really, license. a fee is not set based on hours. That's what I mean. You can't right. go hourly on something right. like that's, this because of It's my hours. understanding that it was, and that's why I'm, yes. Yeah. That's that's exactly what I'm. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it's not Maybe based it's on hours. That's even, what I'll, yeah. I was like, well, we, we, trying we, to get at, and I didn't know if that's what you're looking for. I, I think we, we definitely wanted you to be able to come forward. I, I don't think we exactly mm -hmm. knew what you, you may be asking. So, so I, I would state that. I, it, the license is the license, right? And if you choose to open one day a week or seven days a week, that yeah. that's up to, to you or, or or any business to to do so. Okay. Um, but the but the licenses are not um, are not based upon the number of days open or the number of hours open for any given day. The the fee is the fee. It's a yearly fee whether you're open one day or seven days or no days. That's, okay. Um, that that's how the program is, or not this program, but that's how the licensing fees are set up right now. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I at least wanted to have this discussion. I, I, no, and, I, I didn't and that's know fine, and, that, that, and that, that's okay. And, and um, 
I, for one, and the board wish you much success. We I heard great things. Thank and you. Been Thank there you. actually, but um, uh, but that is the, the the fees are a yearly fee regardless okay. of how often it, it's used basically. Okay. And I do thank you for the yeah, for the, the the truncated fee for the last two months yeah, of the year. Sure. Rather than well, the, we want to be yeah, fair, yeah. right? But um, you know, if if you got into trying to uh, do it more on a daily or hourly, it, it would just be impossible. So okay, so it, okay, okay, all right, all right. Well, thank is, you. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay. Good all right. Luck. Thanks, Mr. Modesto. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Topic number two on tonight's agenda is a um, little update on phase two of the town hall renovation. Oh, I see Kevin in the back running up here um, to come forward and Kevin, uh, with you have easel and drawings like, uh, and everything. Oh, you did bring an easel. I was going to say we have something in the back. Or... Uh, why don't we ask John uh, the corner? Where's your best angle? Because <laughs> we can slide. On the end or over here? Okay. That way everybody can see it. Okay, where do you want us here at the microphone? What, whatever, I guess, probably, if you yeah, have to, to speak to it or. So, so Kevin's actually going to give us an, an overview and an update uh, as to uh, <coughs> phase two of town hall renovations are, are going to be kicking off soon um, and some, some dates and, and some strategies as we move forward uh, with, with that process. Sure. So, so uh, thanks for having us. Uh, good evening. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's nice to finally be here. Um, uh, uh, so just for general introduction, Kevin Rothschild Shea, I'm the principal of Architecture EL. I'm here with Brendan Stratton, my uh, lead project architect, who will uh, help me fill in the blanks on some of the details and uh, yep. Yep. turn some pages if, if we need to. Um, so I'll start with a general update, if you will, which is the, the prime focus of... Um, Sorry our uh, appearance tonight. Uh, it's been a little while, it took us a little while to get through uh, the legalities of the contract and we're, we're happy to be uh, moving the ball forward. Um, so basically, uh, to, to back up and, and recap, uh, we are looking at basically a, a $1.6 million renovation uh, or accessibility improvements. Um, which basically accounts for a ramp up to the entrance, a ramp down to the uh, lower level, uh, largely accessing the senior center and those activities, uh, an interior elevator, uh, fire suppression system, uh, electric service upgrades, and after that, then there's you know secondary improvements that support those prime uh, directives, if you will. Um, so things that have happened since we met uh, informally. Um, uh, some some months ago uh, one the town has acquired a site survey which um, has been transmitted to us and that serves as the base sheet for our landscape architect uh, to build the site development plan on um, we've uh, been back to the site with our engineers Brendan came up here with all our electrical mechanical engineers got them oriented and basically um, you know uh, refocused the, the, this phase of this project, uh, got the engineers uh, a slightly new team uh, familiar with the work that was completed uh, in the offices that we're in uh, tonight, uh, plus looking at the, the existing conditions and everything we'd be, we'd be facing. Um, parallel to that, we've got uh, Cardinal ATC um, <coughs> uh, testing uh, existing materials and surfaces in preparation of um, managing the specifications and the bids. So if there's any discovery of any environmental hazards that need to be specified or mitigated, that we're aware of those and we can include those in, in the project specification. You know, AKA maybe some you know, asbestos tile under a kitchen cabinet or something, um, or in the kitchen or uh, the elevator area. So that that way um, that work is captured and that's included in our, our uh, engineering team and scope of services so that um, that's begun 
Um, in terms of, uh, we also uh, updated the flow test. Uh, we performed the water flow test in the street. That's basically a test that tests the water uh, pressure and flow that's out in the street. And that, uh, that test is the basis uh, for the engineering of the calculation for a fire sprinkler system. So the, the first one had been done uh, you know, many moons ago. Um, and um, we had carried a budget to retest it. Uh, we've talked with Marlene that the new cost, the new test came out significantly higher than our original budget. Um, and we've also um, shared and countered that because we have a lower cost for our construction estimator who we, uh, who we had to replace because our original estimator retired due to uh, some uh, personal and health concerns. So, so we're basically, you know, working with the town and managing those costs. So right now, we, you know, just in terms of some of our additional separate fees, we're, we have about a $400 delta, um, but we, we're proposing to carry those and manage those as we go through the work. And, you know, quite frankly, um, I'm not worried about um, $400 relative to our gross contract. If we have to write an adjustment, we will. Um, but we also want to track that against printing and other uh, budgeted uh, reimbursable expenses, like some of the testing is budgeted. Um, you know, some of these line items had to be budgeted because we couldn't, you know, see all the way into the future to see what the final cost or expenses might be. Um, so overall, uh, we're making good progress on that. The important thing to note on the water test is that the, f the pressure and flow came out slightly lower than it did uh, was it three or five years ago in the original report. Five years ago. So a lower flow pressure, uh, pressure and flow result um, impedes upon the sprinkler design. Uh, we, need, we need volume and we need pressure to push water through a sprinkler system. So that is, uh, you know, that engineering and that work is, is, is managed by our fire protection engineer and that is um, uh, worked into our, our system. So we'll, we'll recap that in a second. Um, so other than that, Brendan's been basically working through coordinating the building, the site, setting the, the firm and uh, you know, construction related dimensions for all the elevations for the ramp, coordinating with the ramp and the structure, and then working the elevator into the building and getting to all the specifics. So in round numbers, we're about 30% you know, uh, in terms of our work to date. Um, it's not a perfect linear path. Uh, some pieces are pushing further forward. In terms of construction detailing and calculation, and others are, you know, swimming around as we uh, we try to nail them down and, and pull the pull the multiple trades trades together. So we have a whole bunch of sheets, but you know, maybe I'll just have Brendan show you a couple key plans: a site plan, the building plan. Um, we have a reduced set, which we can leave with the board tonight. How many? What do we have, Brendan? About forty sheets of progress drawings. So it's. Uh, uh, so, it, you know, we don't need to work through all 40 sheets in development, but it shows the board, you know, between the landscape architecture, the architecture, the structural, electrical, mechanical engineering, all the trades are on board pulling the preliminary design together and building towards, towards that final product, mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. That's fine with with me. Um, so, and, and along that process, when you and Brendan are making the presentation, uh, as we speak to certain <coughs> things, will will some uh, preliminary or or definite definite dates? Uh, I mean, do we have some dates in mind as far as kicking this off? And probably, probably what the townspeople want to know, and 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 the board as well is kind of here's when we anticipate starting, and here's where we plan on starting. And these would be the offices on second, first floor, downstairs, whatever are going to be affected around this time frame. I mean, I think that's sort of what, uh, so we're, what people are looking for. Fair enough. Uh, understanding. So um, Brendan's got a, a few critical dates. So at this milestone, what we own in the contract um, is a, an updated construction estimate at the design development phase. Mm -hmm. So we're right now we're past schematic into design development. So we are circulating this set of drawings that will update the budget that was generated by Maroy. Uh, prior to town meeting uh, last, this past year. Um, they all kind of blur together. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's happening. From that, that estimate will take, um, we think outside of, of two weeks from now, that will be returned. That doesn't stop our forward progress. 
Uh, then from there, we work through, um, you know, if that budget has any concerns, we review those with, with the board, and that informs the, uh, the, the design and or if anything, um, you know, material selections, and we, we work to keep and steer the, the project on budget. Um, the, from there, it's, it's about a month of construction drawings uh, towards the end of December, where we owe or and or the terms of the contract require an 80 percent um, uh, construction document uh, cost estimate. So basically, when the, the drawings are nearly complete but not complete, that budget is then revisited and firmed up so that if there's any escalations or concerns, the final drawings can be uh, tweaked to, to you know, keep the, that budget in check, in which case we're looking at going out to bid in basically in a mid-January to late January window, which would then take probably four to six weeks to bid and contract the project, um, which would then push us round numbers where we approach in March. March, yeah. uh, Which case then we would have probably nine months of construction, which would take us all the way to the end of 18. Recognizing the AV date of September 18, um, I'm quite confident that, and the board is already happy to hear. So as you, as you get closer, you'll have a pre-construction meeting, so, yeah, so we can get things organized here with everybody. But, point about so right now, March is moves. when you might be bringing out the hammers. Yeah, okay, come, so, come right. spring and summer, everybody's going to be moving. Yeah. Do we have the finer points of who moves when? No. Um, so we're a little off the original projected schedule, and that's mostly because it took us a while to get through the, the, the contract and get the project into yeah. the queue and mobilized. But, you know, we're pretty, you know, steadily marching right through that process now. Um, it's kind of a all hands on deck, I sure. think. So right. is that, Yeah. you know, we will have to update the board. You know, AAB will be looking come September to say, okay, you're done. So before that, we will communicate with them and we'll be telling them where we're at and what we expect. So, um, so you know, sometimes late February, you should have a, a more accurate picture of where you're at and when you're going to start. So yeah, so we will be yeah. back one or two more times mm -hmm. with the board, maybe informally meeting with mm -hmm. Marlene or Phil to go over any nuts and bolts or particulars that mm -hmm. you know don't require the entire board, um, and maybe some of that might just be talking about departments, okay. you know, scheduling because we have to write. Um, some of the movement or phasing or, or lo relocation of people into the specification so that when the contractor shows up, he, under he or she understands what is going to be involved with the work, when people will move, what floors they'll have access to and when, because any delays or adjustments in that cost them time or money and that has to be factored. We're just wondering at that point whether some of the contractors may adjust their schedules if you're gonna like jackhammer the elevator, if possibly they might start have an earlier start date or a weekend or something. I know a weekend has a problem, it might be time and a half, but you know, things like that. Right, uh, and those are the kind of things we put in the specification. So if there is, you know, critical times, you know, say uh, the electric service, we have to shut the power down the building. You know, what are the minimal or maximum shutdown periods? When can they occur? Obviously, they would strive to minimize that. They wouldn't, you know, they would work right up to the point that they can make the final connections and switch over. But even that could, you know, even on a hustle day, maybe a, a four to eight hour transition. So where, where in the process do we have some input to work with that, work with you and say, okay, you're at the point where you're going to schedule things. Is that more like March or April or is no, that more? Before we finish the specs, so okay. it would be probably uh, December. Maybe we would fine tune and finalize it in early January because that will be in the spec that the contractor will bid from because those controls and those limitations affect how they manage the job and manage the time. So if it has to be after hours or on premium uh, time, or if there's limitations where they can only work from, you know, 5 a.m. To, to 9 a.m., or, you know, you, it, you know, they have to know that so that the town hall can be up and running. Or if, you, you know, maybe we talk about, well, if it'll have to, you know, we need a Friday afternoon off or Wednesday afternoon. We, we work with you folks to see what your town hall hours are, What's what's you know what's the easiest way to manage all that? So, but that will happen before we're done, and it has to be. And we include that in the spec because 
If we don't, the contractor said, well, that's going to cost me extra. I'm going to charge you overtime. I got to work a Saturday. I got to, you know, we want all that uh, captured in the project manual so that it's bid, bid the way you need to be bid. Yeah. So it's, you know, there'll be, you know, be a lot of nuts and bolts. Um, yeah, and a lot of back and forth conversation. Yeah. So that's going to, you know, some of those, you know, some of the micro organization we can uh, typically do with, with Marlene or Phil and then bring that back to the board for a, an yeah. overall review, you know, to the degree that, you know, Marlene and Phil and you folks, you know, want to be involved or how you want us to manage that, you know, kind of communication process. But so, okay, you know, that's just kind of the normal part of, you know, what we do to get project. a project out. Yeah. Yeah. But it is important because it affects the schedule and the cost and the bid. So that's, you know, to us that's important to, uh, to get that written into the spec. So. And uh, yeah, just um, you had mentioned that this phase was addressing the handicapped access to the first floor here. Is that going to remain on the south side of the building? Yeah. Yep, so Brenda, okay. can you have a quick walk through? <clears throat> and my second question was when that part of it's under construction, are there plans for something like a temporary ramp or whatever, so it's still handicap accessible? Well, those are the questions that we'll have to get to. And honestly, temporary access will be very uh, limited or restrictive. Uh, we could we could talk about whether it's doable, and quite often we find out there are so many hoops to jump through. It's it's easier to come up with a temporary accommodation in an alternate location for a period of time. And those are the kind of things that we will have to discover, where your departments you know, boards or members will have to, you know, learn or understand what works best. Because don't forget, in terms of electrical and sprinkler work, they will be working corner to corner in the building, even if they're running pipes and painting an exposed pipe if they are, or even here they'll be pulling ceiling tiles and resetting them. So in terms of the sprinkler work, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a manageable piece, but it will touch all corners of right. the structure. Um, so big questions like that the, um, on the lower level. Uh, the concern there is whether it's safe, whether, you, you know, even if you can make the accommodation, whether it's comfortable, whether it's quiet, whether it's clean, you know, all those have to be factored in. Um, and quite honestly, in terms of time and cost, the contractor would much rather have the space available so, um, so they can just get in, do their work, and get out. So for everybody, the price is better and the time is shorter. Um, the more, you know, the more jumping around, the more coordination, the more movement, um, that just adds time and money to the project, which, which never helps us. But it's always limited by what, your, what the, the client and the town's needs are, what the flexibility is, what the alternatives are. Um, so, and some of these things we've kind of touched on mm -hmm. uh, over time. Right. <laughs> Uh, but now we are, uh, you know, approaching the, the 11th Getting hour ready. where we have to s start writing these things down once and for all for real. Um, and we know in some of the upcoming meetings and presentations, you know, with, this, uh, with the, the senior center, you know, we'll probably be revisiting our preliminary plans, not tonight, but in, in a little closer detail to make sure everybody's satisfied because we you know in the meeting we accepted the alternate kitchen which is larger relocating the building inspector and, um, so um, so to that degree I, I, it might be even if it's a, an obvious an, a simple overview I mean I'm not sure how much time you folks want to take but I think it's important for Brenda at least walk through the lower level um, and then the couple <coughs> upper levels and then the elevation on the front just so you can you know after all these months kind of See where we're heading. Does that make sense? Sure, that's fine. So, and very similarly to how it's laid out now, we're going to have a ramp which comes down to this basement area. We're going to come through the same doorway, um, <coughs> and then when you come around, you'll have the elevator lobby, small elevator lobby. Elevator will be here. Um, as you continue down the main corridor, we're going to relay out this kitchen because, of course, we're um, absorbing some of the space of the existing kitchen space. Um, so we're dispossessing or moving that over to this office. This office is going to be part kitchen, part file storage. And so that means we're upsetting the building inspector office, which will be down in the uh, southeast corner. Um, small closet in there. We're going to refinish this, insulate the wall. Um, 
and we'll have to modify the doorways because currently they're not to code. Um, so we'll eliminate one of the doors, provide a new door into the office. Um, and then we also have a little work to do over in the, uh, where the water and the electrical will come in. The new electrical service will come in this corner. Um, all the sprinkler equipment will be lined up here. This office gets a little smaller um, and we'll reconfigure there. Towards the rear, um, we have to renovate a little bit the existing stair. That's not to code. Um, so our intent is to pour over it to extend, uh, provide a landing at the top um, and provide an area refuge uh, at the bottom of the stair in order to provide um, code compliant access up and through here. Um, we're going to have to do a little work here to make this uh, fire rated enclosure, which means we'll have to build up above the storage. Right now, that storage wall doesn't continue all the way to the to the floor. Um, and that's a majority of what we're doing on the basement. On the first floor... Brendan, if you could, yes. for one second. Cindy, you're right. Did you have any questions on, on that particular... Okay. I, I just I just have a quick question. Sure. Those stairs you were just referring to are in the back of the, the building. The rear correct? stair, correct. Okay. Yeah. So that really gives a code compliant egress out the, the end of the senior center, uh, which really, you know, the, the stairs and there's no landing at the top. It's, it's, it's not to code. It's not safe. It's not rated. And in addition to the elevator, this gives an area refuge, you know, for, uh, you know, wheelchair safety and, you know, to communicate in the event of a fire, somebody can't get out. Through the yeah, right. I, I mean, I, I think the important thing with lots of these renovations are it's not only to bring us, um, to meet the commitment we made to, to be, uh, to have the fire suppression and, and be handicapped accessible by next fall, uh, but it, it's also going to add another layer or a potential layer of safety for for the, the people at either visiting or working in town hall, you know, as you said, you know, to get to the top of the stairs and have a landing so you, you know, you're protected. I mean, you know, and, and become code yeah. compliant. I mean, we, you know, got to be safe. Yeah, you know? so we're not just, yeah, like you, or to reiterate, we're not just providing access down here, but we're, we're modifying the existing entries yeah. so that they are safe, so that they are code compliant. Um, bring them up to, so if we're going to um, provide a small little um, courtyard here where we come up the ramp, we will have a similar stair access. Um, instead of having it flared out, we're going to square it off. We'll have a, a sidewalk which follows along here instead of stepping out right into the travel access. Um, so there's a little bit of a buffer between pedestrian in the, in the driveway, um, then you come up the ramp, come in. Um, modifications here will be minimal because essentially all we're doing is putting in the elevator itself. Uh, we'll modify a slight lobby here, um, but for the most part on the first floor, all the work's going to be done you know, at grade level or below to provide that ramp and the elevator. Um, I think we have an elevation here somewhere. Let's do that. Oh. An idea of what that might look like. So we're kind of leaving the world of the colored renderings that we floated around mm -hmm. early in the process. And moving into the, the black and white, sure. hard line, nut and bolt yeah. drawings it takes to, uh, to, to construct it. Mm -hmm. And I thought here is to uh, clad this ramp with brickwork so it'll tie into the building instead of being, you know, the plain concrete. Um, as you know, that ramp's, you know, disintegrating, so we'll put, um, we'll put a small cheek wall there with precast uh, concrete cap. We'll put uh, the black steel rail similar to what we have on the existing stair over here that we put in, you know, three years ago. Um, a couple light posts, uh, with a little bit of an accent to it. Um, try to capture a little bit of the vernacular as well as um, 
be able to light this whole area. We will put a uh, cover similar to what we have out there. We'll have to cover the lower ramp uh, to prevent you know, as much snow and water as getting down there as possible. Um, and so essentially, hopefully, it ties in uh, a lot better than the existing ramp does now with the existing building. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else you want to... Well, That's the, where the sidewalk would be as well. And right the along. sidewalk would be, for, well, would be right down yep, here. Just, That's the grade level. You'd come here, go up the stairs if yep. you need to. If not, most most people are parking at the rear. You can travel by this stair here and right. come, come up the ramp or down the ramp, depending on which floor you want to access. Right. I mean, things to know, like Brenda pointed out, that, you know, we'll have a, a, a formal straight on stair that doesn't taper up to a very narrow opening at the top. Um, the uh, the ramps are longer than the ramps you have because they're both illegal, and so we're working. <laughs> so we're and actually using up a little. Have an intermediate landing as well, so we have to put the landings in, and so. Sure. Yeah. Yes, and the landing adds length to the ramp, yeah. and yeah. so you know, so it's eating up a little bit more land out there. It's uh, you know, you know, it's 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 very similar in concept to what is there. Uh, qualitatively, it'll be a significant. Upgrade, <clears throat> right. um, at least that you know appropriate to what we talked about, you know, for a town hall. You know, the the roof structure will be a little bit cleaner, and I think a little bit uh, more appropriate than what's there. It'll be a membrane roof. We, you know, we early talks discussed green roofs and lattice work and all that, but those weren't um, factored into the final funding. Um, so basically, it'll be just you know a clean roof structure with you know integral drainage and roof drainage so the water will all be managed, not just dripping down the sidewalk or landing at the bottom. Um, what type of materials on the roof? Uh, well, it'll be a, it's a membrane, so really it's rubber. Mm -hmm. um, so the well, there's a lot of technical variations, but um, there's anything from a, a, a white to a gray to a black or the three typical colors, depending on what material option. Um, the gray actually chalks off kind of, or yeah, it's, it's black, but it kind of chalks off to a medium gray. Um, some people don't like that. The irony is it actually um, hides a lot more dirt than the, the white looks beautiful on the first day. And then after that, it's just all dirt and leaf stains. Uh, we do see white as the current trend on, on buildings because it has a much lower, uh, you know, higher reflectance, right. a lower heat island effect. You know, in New England, it's not a guarantee better performer in, in terms of heat gain and heat loss. Uh, the black roofs can be hot in the summer, so if you're walking past the black roof, it can, you know, you'll feel the heat radiating off of it. So, like, decisions like that, we haven't come to a final conclusion on. Uh, the gray is in the mid, obviously, the halfway point. Right. Except the gray tends to not look wonderful against a traditional brick building. It's, it, it looks more like a modern material against a traditional brick, and it, it kind of doesn't, quite often it doesn't come off right. Um, so those are the things that we will we'll talk about, we'll bring samples up, and we'll, we'll work towards, you know, uh, best recommendations on. Um, things that have come up recently in development that are uh, worthy of conversation, not in the original scope or budget, but one of our engineers um, raised the uh, uh, prospect of uh, ice melt system on the ramp. That's one of those that's a great idea, but either you need a boiler, and your boilers are not modern with, a, you know, with basically a, a, a manifold and distribution and heat loops, um, uh, and or electric. So electrics tend to be less expensive to go in and maybe cost a little more to operate. Uh, so these are things that we could we're, we're saying out loud to talk about um, weren't in the original scope might make sense might make sense to con consider as uh, bid alternates um, and certainly for us uh, as a service to you um, and these are very new conversations for us you know now that we're kind of coming out of the ground in terms of pulling all our engineering team together um, uh, makes sense for us to present to you in terms of what the costs are in terms of installation options or limitations and or operational costs so that we can at least do the right thing going forward. Sure. We've done other ramps where we've just roughed in the heat um, uh, with the intention that the client would eventually, you know, come along with a new boiler system, whatever else, and then they could tap into it. But, 
you know, you, this ramp's been out there since what, the 70s, Phil? 80s? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, you know, 30 years, and uh, this concrete's going to be here for, for, for quite some time. So we want to, you know, give you folks good guidance on, sure. on options also going forward as, as, as we come across these design ideas. So um, other than that, I don't know, Brenda, do we have any other, you know, we're not even showing you the progress on, you know, the mechanical, electrical, structural. Um, um, but um, we're, um, we're also working and communicating with your uh, separately contracted um, landscape architect for the, mm -hmm. we'll call it the park out here. Mm -hmm. So some of what she's drawn um, is impacted by our work right on uh, the call the northeast corner is that right yeah northeast corner of the building so you know one we need to keep that dialogue open between us the town and the town and that engineer we're fine to talk to them but you know you folks are a critical linchpin and uh you know partner in that in that conversation um so we you know we'd be interested in uh, getting some feedback on where the bidding and contracting is on that because we want to make sure that any adjustments mm -hmm. um, and that's why you know your landscape architect reached out to us uh, mm -hmm. you know some some months ago um, so we do need to hear more about where that bid and contract are and what the expectations are because the two pieces of work do need to be coordinated sure. um, and um, you know we think the the the, the theme is relatively minor, mm -hmm. but there is a juncture where both projects will touch each other, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's actually in this corner right here, because as we bring the new electrical service and the new water in, um, your sidewalk, and of course it's not displayed here, there's a sidewalk coming here, and then you're gonna relocate these uh, memorial plaques. So one, we don't wanna disturb the area where those are going in, but if we coordinate the construction and before some of this work we can get in entrenched and put our you know services in before they even come out to relay out the part but again it depends on when they're bidding their project um, that did that went out to bid construction and the board of selectmen have awarded the contract uh, i expect that they'll be approving the contract um, it, next monday or tuesday okay. um, i met with the uh, contracted last week as well as the architect yeah. um, for the project and you know depending on weather conditions um, there is some work that they may be able to to do um, but they they expect that you know most of the work will probably be in the springtime they were talking about maybe putting up a fence mm -hmm. um, I don't know how soon they would do that but probably not until actual construction starts right. well we can talk you know more specifically but even there we don't want a temporary construction fence or a work limit line established by that contract which right. then has to get moved one we don't want them to have to move it at some expense to you or two have our you know our contractor is not going to want to move their fence <laughs> right so you know it's just the uh, dotting the i's and crossing the t's if we can manage the sequence of work or if we get a if there's a submittal from them on where the fence is going to go we're happy mm -hmm. you know you're you're communicating with that sure. architect and contractor, you know, Make to sure the degree that makes sense. You keep us in the loop because yeah. if they, we, you know, we ask for them, it's okay. Give us a layout of where your construction fence is going to go, um, and or we can show what we know on terms of site and make sure that they right. stay clear. Or you know, it's right. not hard. Right. I, I find it encouraging that we're already having a coordinated a conversation about coordinated efforts. Okay. Which well, aren't going to happen until spring, so. Um, right, but the reality I, is, if we bid and start, yeah. the, no, I, yeah. absolutely. I just, I just think it's, um, it's, it's encouraging, you know, for me personally, yeah. or as a board of selectmen member, to to know that we've got two different projects going that are going to overlap somewhat, and that the conversation's already started. So, yeah. appreciate that, and also appreciate that from. Uh, from the, the folks still in the, the park so there again we do rely on you know yeah. the board or Marlene yeah. you know we're happy to talk to them directly but you know ultimately we speak and answer to you and as as do they and you know we don't we don't want it to gonna go around and 
the, no, no, it's great. The circles that don't Mar happen. Marlene is the go-to person, yep. uh, Marlene and Phil, for the building and, and, and working with the, the two uh, contractors. So. I think, I don't know, did we miss anything else off of our so. cheat sheet? You guys have any questions no, for no, Kevin or Brendan good. just at yeah. this point? So do we know from Brian when we'll have the um, testing results back? Well, he was even here today doing tests. As far as the results, he didn't say when he'd get the test results back. Um, <clears throat> but he also did say he'd have to come back uh, at some point to do a test cut in, um, in the first office over here uh, where the elevator eventually will be. Um, so he can just test the flooring and any adhesives below it, um, which would be saw cut. So he said he could even do it after hours or, or you know, five o'clock, come in because he's got to run a power saw. Okay. Doesn't want to disturb uh, operations. Okay. Um, I figure we can coordinate that later. We don't sure. have to do it right now. But um, but as far as the test results, we'll probably get it back uh, early next week okay. for the other test that he's done. Um, he's also confirming what they had tested the first time around four years ago when we were doing construction as well. It, they were just uh, double checking what they had um, in their paperwork, uh, see what else needed to be tested for the newer sites of construction. Um, but again, probably won't hear from them until earlier in the middle of next week. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, the and really what he's mostly, you know, other than the obvious where the elevator goes through, the, the sprinkler pipes penetrate a lot of walls and a lot of floors. So he has to look, you know, you know left and right, top to bottom, um, because we don't want to be, you know, penetrating or drilling anything that's, uh, you know, has any kind of environmental limitations. Um, it's, it's really not hard to manage it, but it, it does affect the cost of the work, the schedule of the work, and the specs. I, I think the bottom line for, for us and, and the employees of, of Town Hall um, is, you know, we can try to coordinate it as best we can mm -hmm. moving forward, right? And, and things happen. I, I think we all realize that. But if we at least have a plan mm -hmm. um, and, and attempt a coordinated effort on what, when, and where, yep. it, it just helps because we've got a lot of departments, as you know, are going to be affected by this, and we're trying to give everybody as much of a heads up as possible. Again, we realize things change for whatever reason, but you know, if, if we've got a if we've got a plan, then then that's good. Yeah. And I think we'll have to you know dive into that a, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, if say they're up here working and there's offices and they're doing sprinkler piping, it might be somebody's upset for the morning or the day. Yeah. Um, downstairs, I think uh, will be a, a much greater upset, especially with the kitchen being affected. Mm -hmm. uh, the the main room or the senior center is less affected except as it relates to access and if uh, you know continuation of service you know is the obvious concern there um, but I think the yeah I think the overall you know schedule and impact will be pretty well managed throughout the course of the work obviously um, but suffice it to say, building the community center, the senior center, especially the kitchen areas, uh, where the areas where the elevator cut through, you know, whoever's in those rooms, you got a few months to clean your office. You know? yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's the, you know, that'll be a big one. Poor building inspector. <laughs> he's got some, he's got some homework. So. Okay. Great. And you know, Cindy. Okay. Great. Thank that you sense. very much, Kevin. Yeah. yeah, and we know you'll be in touch with Marlene, and then we'll get the information we need to uh, in the next few weeks, because I know yeah. December is a I expect important date you know, for you guys. We can talk so. schedule, but we'll probably be back, you know, at least, probably, probably one or, you know, each successive month just, sure. to, mm -hmm. just to report back and update. Okay, great. Fair enough? Yes, thank you. Great. That's yeah. it. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for having us. You bet. Thank you for thank the update. You. Thank you. So we can leave you a small half size there, sure. just for just for record. That would be great. Uh, Thank you. You can always give it to you digitally if you want. It's. Uh, you know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. We'll get out of the way.
<laughs> Next. <laughs> Thank you very much. So you don't need this, right? Because you have them in your packet. This should have some. Um, yeah. Phil, we have a 6.30 meeting with the uh, Board of Assessors. If We've got a couple things under the DPW Director's Report that we can uh, we can address. And, and oh, there goes Kyle. All right. So. All right. So we have a meeting in, in five minutes with the assessors. It's a scheduled meeting, so uh, a hearing, a hearing. Nope, that's, that, that's fine. I was just, just, I don't know where Kyle, and Kyle, would you mind um, coming forward too? So we'll have Kyle, the building inspector. So let's do the, uh, in our packet, we have a um, request for a, um, an abatement. Yeah, it's for 50 King Street, a sewer abatement. Uh, when we generate the accounts, we turn the we turn on the sewer side of, of the account, and the sewer is accessible that that property, but they haven't hooked into it yet. It's not up and running, so they were charged a minimum the minimum fee of seventy five dollars, yeah. and they're not using it. So okay, and your recommendation is to to yeah, abate, abate the seventy five dollars. Is there a motion for that abatement? Make a motion to accept the abatement. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Uh, and the other topic we wanted to just get an update on, uh, out on Route 5 and 10, we're looking to have the sewer extended. And uh, Kyle and Phil uh, and Marlene have been working with, uh, with some businesses out there and some of our state legislators uh, to apply for grants, look for grants to, to help us and do that sewer extension. So this is out on... Uh, I don't know what the numbers of the street are, but West Street, 15 West is 15 West. Eltron, okay. which wants to move up the road more towards Chestnut End of uh, West Street. Okay, so they're looking to expand their they're their business and build. They're going to keep that plant, but they want to build a, you know, I guess uh, it would be still a warehouse, but uh, light manufacturing, mixed office space, phase one. Then uh, residential apartments uh, would be phase two. Which, which would help us as a town with um, with, with the affordable housing that we're in sustainable housing that we're trying to they work on. Express they'd like to do you know solar yep. for the apartments and and uh, you know make them efficient. Okay, so we had a meeting back in the fall right. with with some of those custom with, with some of the businesses out there yeah, and impressive. Representative Cocott and Representative Rosenberg's office mm -hmm. and I just didn't know if there had been any further uh, movement on the. Do you, do you know on the, they, they were going to help us apply for the grant or, or help us push for the grant I don't know if the time frame has extended uh, or excuse me uh, has has completed or my uh, understanding from Erica Gies is they were the reps were waiting that's Steeples uh, architect yep they were waiting for an application but from talking to Phil I guess the application is done electronically and it's locked I guess yeah, the mass which means work, the date must be or, or something has the closed. The mass right? work grant this, this round was due earlier than normal. It's usually not due. It was, it was due before we even had that meeting. So we were locked out. Of course, you know, I'm touching base with a few Western Mass delegates and to see if there's any way we can manually submit it and if there is any kind of a pocket of money left from other mass works projects haven't heard back yet uh, right. my feeling is no we'll probably have to wait till the next mass work grant this is the um the, and the mass works grant is it, correct me if i'm wrong the mass works grant is what we were able to secure when to do um the water line is that no was, was, that was a different grant the mass works grant for Hatfield was yeah. to do the sidewalks. The sidewalks, okay. We did the sidewalk right. project under the master. Okay. Program. So if anybody has contact, you had mentioned, may perhaps maybe placing calls, I think it would be advisable maybe to get the more the merrier. Yeah. To try to get this through because they seemed to be quite pro pro uh, getting us oh, yeah. the money. Yeah. So um, in Stevo's case that's a very large project, so very large, and I have others that want in on, on West Street. Well, that's what I was going to say. So not only would the project help Stiebel, um, but any other business that, you know, from the bottom of well, Chestnut you, Street, right, not going Plus we back. had 
Scapes Builders. Here. Scapes Builders was here. Right. They have purchased property yep. down there. Doug Blowers, uh, he wants to do some construction over there for and locate his business over mm -hmm. at West. But there's quite a few bigger, even big players that want parcels along there that need sewer. So the only the only positive note that I really see here is that you know since the grant application has closed, and the awards are probably going to be made shortly, or if not, they already have. They'll know exactly what they awarded and or who didn't qualify. So there might be a pocket of money there. There might be. And for this particular for round. For this particular right. round. Uh, I did touch base what I said with the Western Map delegate. Yep. And, you know, he assured me that if there's any pockets of money, even from previous MassWorks projects that didn't come to fruition or came in under budget, right. that... You know, he will help us. Sure. But the whole thing to the whole process is to be able to manually submit because we cannot do it online. Maybe it would be uh, a good idea if the Board of Selectmen uh, drafted a letter, put together a letter to the reps, um, you know, kind of urging the importance of this, uh, that it would help us with our housing needs and, you know, the growth of a a business that definitely wants to expand and stay within Hatfield. And jobs. Yeah, and jobs. <laughs> jobs, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I certainly don't have a problem with uh, the board you know, submitting or sending something that. And, and by the way, I just wanted to make sure. I, so, so Representative Cocott and Representative Rosenberg's office were here and were very supportive. I, didn't, I don't want to give the impression that they weren't. So right. I think, again, it, it is a timing issue. Uh, if we can find some pockets of money that have, have not been used in previous projects, that would be awesome. I guess the good news would also be if, if we're not, we're already hopefully ahead of the game for the next round of grants that will become available because we've got our engineer working on uh, putting, has already put it together, right, uh, for the submission. And we've already got the legislators lined up. So, But once know, again, the squeaky wheel usually gets yeah. the grease, so. Yeah. Yeah. If we keep on it and on it, so we'll keep squeaking. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, did you guys have uh, any questions about this? Not on that topic, no. Not on that topic. I don't know if we need a motion to create a letter or. I, I don't think so. And we should just be able to put a letter together and send it, right? We can yeah. send it all. That's how all three of us could sign it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think okay. that would be appropriate. Okay. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. So we have a 6 30 uh, tax classification hearing, which is in about one minute. <clears throat> so, Tony, we're going to ask the, if you don't mind, the, we'll have the assessors um, sit in the first row. We, we can take up that topic um, in a little while. Hi, Ron. Hi, Scott. Hi, Jenny. Is Stan, is, is Stan coming? Stan will be here. Now. Okay. I, I didn't want to start with that. That's him, okay. So. Okay. All right. All right, so it is 6.30, so um, I'm going to call the meeting to order uh, the, excuse me, the, uh, the public hearing to order uh, for no November 15th, Memorial Town Hall meeting room, uh, 6.30 p.m., Board of Selectmen are meeting with the uh, Board of Assessors. So, so the assessor's recommendations, the Board of Assessors recommends that a factor of one be adopted for FY 2018. This will keep a single tax rate for all classes of property in Hatfield. The Board of Assessors recommends that no open space discount be granted for FY 18. The Board of Assessors recommends that no residential exemption be granted for FY 18. The Board of Assessors recommends that no small commercial exemption be granted for FY 18. Okay, thank you. So we have, in front of us, we have a list of motions. Um, so I'll make a motion to move the Board of Selectmen to adopt a factor of one for fiscal year 2018 to maintain a single rate for all classes in Hatfield as recommended by the Board of Assessors. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll make a motion to move the Board of Selectmen not grant an open space discount for fiscal year 2018 as recommended by the Board of Assessors. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? No. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion move that the Board of Selectmen not grant a residential exemption for fiscal year 2018 as recommended by the Board of Assessors. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion the Board of Selectmen not grant a small commercial exemption for fiscal year 2018 as recommended by the Board of Assessors. Is there a second? Second. Any further second. discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thanks. Were there, uh, thank you, Jenny and- So and I also need the um, LA-5 signed by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. And that's the excess levy capacity. And that number will be filled in once the remainder of the recap stuff is finalized. So I will get that to Marlene once it's done. So I just need that signed tonight. By all three of us? Yes, please. Okay. I don't, okay. Before Hard to see. Did, um, well, we're looking at this. So was there any public comments, by the way, on this? This is a hearing, so if anybody had any comments. Do you guys have anything else you wanted to add to this? Okay. I just said, Jenny, what, what figure is you? LA-5 is the excess levy capacity. We don't right, have that number don't filled in at that yet. point because the information is not all entered into Gateway. Okay. And it, is there like a target date that you expect that you'll have it? Is this something that's going to be done very soon? Or? I hope so, yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, ideally, you guys sign off on that. To, right. Correct, but it was, and everything is already in there, and you're signing right, off on Right, but you were that. hoping to have everything by the 15th before when we talked last month and you didn't get everything Correct. you needed right. sent to you? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you want to sign that first? Since you're the yeah, chair? no, it doesn't matter. Are we all going right along this line? That's fine. Is it the way yeah, it's not really it's set up for three? Okay. Yeah. Is it two separate? Um, I just sign on that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Is so we have another meeting. We have a board meeting, so okay. I think. Okay, yep, so at this point, there's okay. having. thank you for the information. Uh, there's no further public, or there's no public comment, so. So did finance have anything for us, or are we all set? I think you're all set, unless you're okay. certainly welcome to join the meeting, but. No, I think we're okay, good. Okay, we're going to get an update, so we can okay. fill you in. All I right. met with the financial team this morning, so I can update the board on that information. Okay, great. All right, okay. hearing closed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. All right. So we have a meeting at 645 with our financial team and the finance committee. Uh, just there's something we can. Um, it's only 635, mm -hmm. so we have 10 minutes. Can you take a yeah, but contract? Yeah, but I don't see. I, I was thinking that, but yeah, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, what? You want to take five or what? Well, do you I do? think. Um, or is Tony out I, there? Well, that's, I'm not sure. That's. Okay. Are you taking five minutes or no? Is that, um, did you talk about it? Is that. Is that I, well, I. I'm going to really just grab some paperwork if we are. Well, that's I think. Let's just. Can we just see if Tony comes in and then we can. Take care of that particular of item number four. Unless you want to do that afterwards, doesn't matter um, to me. You yeah, I'll grab, 10 that, minutes I'll grab that paperwork if we're not going to do. That. I think it's going to take more than ten minutes. I was just seeing if I could look it up on here, but I don't think I can. Uh, All right. Well. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Came in on the tail end of that John, right? Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Uh, Street. Yes. Came in on the tail end yep. of that, and I was just wondering. Um, I wasn't sure of the scope of it. Yep. Um, but I wasn't also sure that whether you guys were aware of the fact that the redevelopment authority had, what, five or six years ago, done a light industrial business park development plan for North Hatfield Road, which would have been facilitated tremendously uh, by sewer and water coming up. Uh, West Street. Five, yeah. Okay, and I wasn't sure to what extent that was involved, but um, you, you might want to resurrect that if you're looking for 
some sort of uh, ammunition, if you will, yeah. to support mm -hmm. an application for that sure. grant. Yeah. Because we're talking about, and there's, you know, the, the numbers are there. Um, we could cite that in the letter that we Yeah, you might want to pull that out of the file. Yeah. Um, well, it's in digital form somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a substantial amount of justification for that kind of um, utility infrastructure coming up 5 and 10. Yeah. And the only thing that was holding back, holding that back, obviously, was the cost to do that. And if, if MassWorks is uh, something that might, might apply, that, that grant program, that could really open up the northern end of, of that area uh, significantly for development. And there's a lot of land uh, off of 5 and 10 and North Hatfield Road that's currently zoned by industrial. Mm -hmm. right. So it's, it's perfect for... Great, thank you. I, that, that was not part of the, um, the current scope, to be honest with you. It was from the bottom of Chestnut, Chestnut heading where? south. south. Uh, because those businesses came forward and actually, you know, sh showed their, their business plans, et cetera. So, um, yeah. but I, I mean, it, it sure makes sense to uh, to look at the work that's already been done and see if that can just be added to it and go for the whole thing. Yeah, thank you. All right. So, John, why don't we take um, five minutes, please, um, and then we'll meet with the uh, the finance committee and the financial team from the town. Thank you, John. Welcome back to the meeting of November 15th. Uh, we're here now with the Finance Committee uh, and also our financial team, town accountant and treasurer slash collector and associate treasurer. Uh, just to get an update on where we stand with the town's finances um, as of today. So uh, we've been doing this on a monthly basis, uh, just getting updates on meeting our um, current obligations and, and the obligations of making sure the paperwork and uh, records are, are updated and submitted and all those things the financial team do. So here they are. I guess uh, I'll start it off by asking a question. So it's, it's November 15th. I think today was the, uh, or this week is the cutoff for having fiscal year 2017 completed or yeah, completed. Yes, reconciled. Right? Recon reconciled. Recon and, reconciled. Yeah, reconciled. So, so having said that, I guess I would leave it off to um, Derek and Laura Lee to just give us a status of where we, we stand to, to date. I can tell you where we are as far as um, we handed off the fourth quarter to Justin and asked him to help me out on that. He's asked for a couple of things um, to finish reconciling the fourth quarter. Okay. I put down um, July through March. And whatever was kind of, I didn't have backup for, I had questions on, I put it on applied revenue. Um, so we have to circle back around, get that unapplied revenue down a little bit smaller than it is right now. Um, currently, uh, we're at about 442,000 unapplied revenue. Now, let me just, sounds like a big number, but a lot of that's overstated simply because we're keeping turnovers together. So I think I've explained this the last time. If we have a collector turnover that has 17 receivables and I have a question on one of those receivables, I move the entire 17 and done applied. So the other 16, we but, might actually have information on, but because it's part of a larger package, correct. the whole package is sort of on hold or... Okay. Correct. And right. I just didn't want to break that up because it's easier to keep that transaction together okay. to go back to the source document. Yep. Um, month by month, um, I will say that January and December, um, I ended up getting sick, so when I was trying to put those on the books over the weekend, I wasn't here to kind of track down the information. And Laura Lee did hand me off some information on my desk. It was just underneath some other, other paperwork, so I didn't actually have it when I was booking it. So that's why those months are a little bit higher. Um, July is, um, we actually know it, that there's only two transactions we have to track down, and, and July is reconciled. Um, the other months are, are a little higher, 40, 000, you know, somewhere between 40,000, um, 150,000. And like I said, January, and, and January is actually not bad, it's at 54,000. Um, but then they, they come back down. February is only like 8,000, March is only at 3,000. Okay, thank you. So 
so this isn't, yeah, so I'm going to ask a question. Is this unusual or isn't this unusual and it's just a matter of because we're still in a catching up with so much, it's, it's just, it, it's not unusual in the accounting world that something like this would happen, I guess is my question. It's just, it's, it seems that much larger because we're, we're still we're, we're catching we're, up. We're catching up and, and right now, ordinarily we would, as, as we're going through, if we were caught up, on a month-to-month -month basis, mm -hmm. the unapplied would there wouldn't be an unapplied right. account. So you'd, you'd, you'd probably those. know the next, the following month, mm -hmm. like next right. month, you would know from this month what what wasn't aligning for whatever reason. Basically. We would carry that as an outstanding item, right? And and you know, expecting it to clear the next month if it was you know if it's a timing difference, right. if that carried for a couple of months, we would know that there was an issue and look into it. But no, there should be no unapplied. Right. Uh, the unapplied is, is basically there so that we could keep applying. You know, I didn't have to stop and spend five or ten hours researching to get a month closed. We just wanted to keep putting the revenue right. on and circle back around and, and go through it. And, and that's our goal. So we, we've gone through the whole year of 2017, basically. And now we're in that go back, circle back, and find the unapplied. Um, Correct. And like I said, the, the that... majority of, Jan uh, of January and December I have in my office, so uh, I just have to write the journal entries and, and reclassify it where it should be. Daryl? So, so we are, you are reconciled besides the sun applied through March, and then Justin and Bay State are working on fourth quarter? He had or... me, yes, he had me research three transactions. I got back to him, so I would assume that he is very close to sending me the files and telling me to put them on the books. So we anticipate within the next few days or a week, we should have, we should be, uh, except for that unapplied, we should be reconciled for all of 2017. We're looking at the end of, of this month. It, as far as is, is reconciled to, to go forth yes. on the tax recap, yes. Right. In other words, we're gonna be the tax recap is not as, as critical on like the balance right. sheet. So we need to have revenues mm -hmm. as opposed to where those revenues are on the ledger for the balance sheet. So as long as we have right. all the revenues there, certain classifications we do need to make sure that, that they're very close. And we're working on those aspects. But when we have that, we can go forward with the tax recap. Then we need to close the books, which is doing all the closing entries, that's when we'll have the final numbers for all the receivables and, and produce the That's when you'll statements. do the Schedule A, we'll get free, free cash, cash and all that. But we should, so, so we are on track to set a tax, to do the recap, to set a tax rate in December. Absolutely. So we can properly send bills out when we're supposed to not be in any, right? Yes. So that's correct. a good thing. Yes, that's correct. correct. Okay. We're looking at submitting for free cash the beginning of January. Okay. And and that's when all this unapplied and all these accounts are kind of cleaned everything up. will be cleaned up. We're gonna we're gonna have to clean up some of those before we get to the to yeah. filing the recap. Yeah. Yeah, that's, but yeah. you know we need to get it a little bit closer. Let's say it doesn't have to be exact, but we need to be a little bit closer than where we right. are today, and then we'll be fine to file the recap. Right. Then we need to go and get them exact to file the balance sheets and and the financial statements. Okay. Are we, um, you know, I, I, I still realize there's been a lot of work done by, by all those involved. Are, are we also doing our best to stay current with 2018? With, yeah, yeah, with 2018. With 20, yeah, with 2018. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, as far as 2018, um, I'm on target for having July and August completed for December 1st. Okay. So, and I'll be passing off the SOR files to Derek. So we're, we're staying and, on target with what we have for the 2018 plan. And, and that's great because then going forward, you're gonna, it's going to be much easier to look back yes. a couple two months. months ago and say, oh, what happened to XYZ account mm -hmm. versus looking back 14 months ago saying right. what happened. So Absolutely. It's going to be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And cool. we now have a process in place. I mean, right. when you guys first came to us and said, okay, well, when's this going to be done? Right. We didn't have a, a, an idea of the process of what we were going to run into as far as problems with transactions. I mean, right. We have a much clearer picture of what that is now. 
um, a much clearer picture of how to resolve it, research it, and... and and to know what the time is associated to the task now. We will still be pushing, though, to get caught up. Because, oh, again, absolutely. you're saying in August, July and August for December 1st. Correct. Um, yeah. So we still need to right. catch up with the rest of the current oh, yeah. fiscal year. Foot is clearly still on the accelerator mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. It has to be. Yeah. We, we can't, you know, we, we've, I know we're coming into the holiday season, but we still have to keep our eye on the goal and... Thanks mm -hmm. to keep Frank and moving forward. Yeah. Thank you. And I just heard that we were expecting free cash by January. Is that? To submit it so early it, January. We'll know sooner than that. In reality? No. Sooner than January 1st? Mm -hmm. No. We yeah. won't know free cash so before then. Planning. Right. Should That's where I, I did report that out that I had expected we were going to be submitting it the middle of December. Um, that's not the case. And looking back at communication with Justin Cole, he, he did say the end of December, beginning of February, uh, January. Okay. And, and on that note, I am meeting with Justin tomorrow at a conference. So if you guys have any questions for him, you know, I can certainly, you know, sit down and draw out those those answers for you and send you an email tomorrow. Yeah, I would just want to make sure to to Paul's point that we are still on track for early January getting free cash set and more importantly oh. having a really solid number yeah. so that we Cap don't have to right. worry. Right, capital about planning is, is right. looking, right. actually capital planning is, is scheduled to meet with the treasurer and accountant um, at their December 5th meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a backlog of capital that didn't even get done mm -hmm. last year too, so, so anyway. Yeah. We will work diligently on getting you that yep. number as soon as we can. Thank you. Do we, um, we don't, not that any of us can predict the future, but we, we don't foresee or know of any upcoming obstacles to, to, to continue moving forward. I know we have some holidays, so there's some long weekends, there's some time off, I, I, I get it. But, you know, the, these are benchmarks that all seem attainable and, and reachable that, that we have there. I mean, we've been doing pretty good, sticking pretty close to the, the dates we've had out there. Right. Um, but that, that January date is huge. I mean, uh, between the, the, the Finance Committee, Board of Selectmen, and the uh, Capital Planning, you know, January is when everybody's hitting the ground running, looking to put all the budgets together, and that, uh, that free cash amount is going to, you know, makes a big difference with the things we go forward with. Um, so just, just I just wanted to check. So 2000 this year, July and August are going to be just on December 1st because I was maybe I'm wrong, but I thought last meeting in October that we that they said, we said that July was already done for this year. All the cast and those, off, those are the deadlines that I have for those two months. Right. So on December 1st, I'll pass that off to Derek. Right. What Cindy okay. thing is at but the October 25th next. meeting, you had reported that you were working on July and August and you had expected to wrap August up the end of the following week. Right. I thought those were done already. December 1st is the deadline, and I've been working on uh, my November 1st um, due date for real estate and water to address. Right. But I, I, like I said, I just thought that we had discussed last meeting that July and August were done already. No, I did, I did no. not say that they were done already. That's what so I'm that's asking. That's what I was working on. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Thank you. Ed, did you have anything to... Cindy, did you have anything else for Derek um, or Lorelei? You know, I'll look that date up, but I'm sure. Okay. I would like to meet again in December to make yep. sure we're... I, I, I don't know what the rest of the yeah. committee thinks, yeah. but... Sure. Mm -hmm. I, to get an update and to make sure, because really it's it's so important that we're ready for the recap and mm -hmm. that, you know, with the holidays, it's going to be a balancing act, getting all that done and ready, ready to go. And then you'll have time to look through this stuff, too. Oh, yes. The light <laughs> reading. Gives yes. you four weeks. So, uh, Daryl, on those, along those lines, um, our next meeting is probably going to be that middle week of December. Right. You know, either the 11th or 12th or 14th, somewhere right. in there. Is it? Yeah. I, 
Yeah. As long as the, I'll be away, but as long as you It was going to be the 13th, but right. you have a conflict, correct? Oh, yeah, we're waiting to see what these oh. guys can do. So, yeah. the 12th or I think, All right, wait so, a minute, so, I want to go with you to the. <laughs> yeah. okay. So it'll be that week? That's, that's fine. You want to do it the same way? You guys will come in? Uh, I don't know if I can switch. Be, Give you know, us a time, 6 30, somewhere in that zone. Is okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you guys in the. Yeah. Okay, Mike? Just a quick question on the free cash issue subject. Does that free cash number that we anticipate having in January include the amount that's being that retained? That they withheld, right. Yes. Part of the Department of Revenue? Right, that would Absolutely. be included. Oh, okay, so so all of that, so even that amount is pending, if you will, the timely Absolutely. Uh, completion of all of this. Right. Okay, yes. and my other question is, have you guys been keeping the Department of Revenue mm -hmm. involved in this process? So that, Intimately. So they are monitoring. Understanding. They are monitoring Hatfield. They are. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anybody from the finance committee have any questions or comments? Or did Laura Lee or Derek, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I think we're, I mean, we all know what we need to get done. And and, and, get and the off your offices themselves are, are interacting and know what the other one needs. I mean, you know, okay. Yep, we're we're sending out. You know, I send out an email of information I need. Well, we've got it. Comes to my office. Last time, put it on the books. Great, good. All right, thank you. Thanks for the update. Good job. So before the finance committee leaves. We, um, so the big, the big book you have in front of you, um, light <laughs> for light mm -hmm. reading, I, Marlene can probably speak to it, but um, it's a financial policy manual for the town of Hatfield that we worked with the uh, Division of Local <laughs> Services. So what they did was took our, our town's existing um, fin manual, financial manual, mm -hmm and sort of melded it with, with theirs and, and updated things and um, right. updated information. Right. And so uh, it came to the board of, of selectmen, um, but the, the board and Marlene felt, you know, we should get you folks on the finance committee a copy as well, just to, to have, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and share the information with you. So we ultimately will review, we haven't, well, I haven't yet. Ed may have and Cindy may have, but I haven't reviewed this yet. Um, so we're going to go through it and then, um, you know, adopt, adopt, adopt it each by section. section. Okay. Um, right. Okay. And, and, and so I guess what I would ask is maybe on an individual basis, if, if you do have time to, to at least peruse it, if there's yeah. anything that just stands out glaring that you, you need, you would like an answer to or need clarification of. Um, I mean, we can either we can either wait to meet in December, or if it's some, you know, or you can f pop the question to Marlene. If there's yeah. just going to be a handful of them, uh, we'll work to get those answers for you. And maybe, you know, yeah, um, yeah I think I, it's a lot of reading. There's, there's no doubt oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and the good news is we're not reinventing the wheel with this. Yeah, we're, we're just improving it. That's so correct. that's yeah, it's it's a well laid out. Yeah. Um, policy manual, and this was the result of the Commonwealth Community Compact Grant. Right. Well, I think this DOR is sat with the financial team and... Yep. Right. No, we, we can do that, and, and any questions we have individually, we'll just shoot them to Marlene to give, give everyone kind of a heads up of what we're thinking, and then we can discuss it at your middle of December meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. If that if that, that is okay works. with you guys, mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay with us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Did thank you for being here. Did you um, anybody have any questions about anything? I mean, I think you're as no. up to date as we are as far as uh, where we stand with. Right. Yeah. We we as a board we're going to slip off oh, okay. into one of the offices. We we've, we've got. For a few minutes, we've got some mundane Stuff. things like minutes and things like that to go through. So, okay. so we've got that. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and thank you. Must be part of this. And the more the merrier, Daryl. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. Happy Same to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.
No, that was so <coughs> Thanks, guys. Am I wrong, or is that what we were told last month, those dates? That's what I was saying. On, yeah, at the exactly. meeting on the 25th, she did say that she said she, she had it done. She had said July was pretty well done. Yep, and, and she's working on, on August. August. And she had hoped to have it done the following week. She did yeah. mention, though, she had a due date of November 1st for real estate. Um, I know, but that's, that's mm -hmm. going to be every quarter. You know, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you can't use that as an That's every quarter. So, absolutely, so there's been no progress on that at all. It's been another month. <clears throat> I don't have the minute. Okay. I don't have the. Yeah, I took notes on it. That's why I remember because I wrote it. But. Um, all right, so um, gonna... Marlene, we are up to the town administrator's report. Okay. Uh, where are we? One of which we've knocked here. off. All so, already. Mass Cultural Council, topic eight. Is that where we are yes, at? Yes, the Mass okay. Cultural Council fiscal year. Annually, the town receives uh, grant funds from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Yes. And this year, the Cultural Council has been awarded uh, $4,400. And, and then, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the process, but they have an application process yeah. that people submit to their board um, for uh, various, arts or various yeah. pro cultural yep. projects. Um, so the state requires the, the Board of Selectmen to approve the state contract, and Brian, you'll need to sign that state contract that's late. That's the originals in the signature folder. Okay. Um, attached is a scope of services and, and budget, so it just sort of is the criteria that's laid out right. by the state. Um, and actually, the second pa signature page, I believe, needs to be witnessed by um, the town clerk. She needs right, to. Right, but I think that that's the castle form. Yeah, she's here. That the castle form. I think that's you, though. That has to be signed by you. That's who's authorized to sign for them as the um, administrator, or the chief. You or Derek? Usually, it's oh, it's usually Derek, it's the usually. chair, the board of selectmen chair. That, and I noticed that they have. Mm -hmm. um, the previous the chair, three, Pat, gone on there. Right, on the, so we'll have to on the contract, which right. is this page. That, that would be the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. But this is who can sign for the monies. Um, it certifies that you are the Acceptance chief. Acceptance of uh, yeah. payments. And we've done two in the past on, the, on other ones. Okay. You were Derek and... So in case somebody leaves, somebody can still yeah. sign to get yeah. to accept the money. We okay. want the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Actually, um, I, <coughs> these are usually applied for in October, and I attended the 350th uh, committee meeting uh, last Wednesday on the 8th. You were there, mm -hmm. and I brought that information to them because they are doing some cultural type things, so they may be able to apply mm -hmm. for the 350th anniversary yep. um, for the next couple of years, really, as they plan mm. for that to get some of this. Good idea. But, don't, do you have to use the money within that fiscal when that, year? Um, it's it is a year, but normally when they when you fly on August with the other ones, the EMPs that I do, that it um, runs till June the following year. Okay. Normally, and then, and then by July thirty first, you have to have the paperwork back and it's closed. So. Okay. All right. If uh, the board would vote to approve. The contract for forty four hundred dollars, four thousand four hundred. Do we have a motion? Yes. Sure. Um, a motion to vote and accept uh, the Mass Cultural Council's uh, grant for two thousand eighteen in the amount of four hundred. Excuse me, four thousand four hundred dollars. I'll second that. Second. Any further discussion? No. no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Marlene. Welcome. The next Here. item is a letter of agreement between the Community Preservation Committee and Open Space Committee. That's for the second phase of the improvements for Smith Academy Park. The um, right. This is what Gary had. Uh, well, I'm sorry. This is I'm um, I'm sorry. It's wrong. That is for closing costs to pervert. Um, 
for the conservation restriction on Horse Mountain. I'm sorry. There, it will be a letter of agreement for the second phase, but this is not for the construction. This isn't that one. So that, right. That's You're on common. topic nine, and that was for? On topic the, nine. So it's for the CPA on Horse Mountain. Community preservation. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was Smith Academy Park. Okay. And it's been reviewed by? Um, it has been reviewed by town council. By town council. Okay. So um, is there a motion to... Sign the approve the letter of agreement. Approve the letter between Hatfield Open Space and the Town of Hatfield CPA. Make a motion to approve the uh, Community Preservation Letter Agreement. Of the CPA I'll second it. Horse Mountain. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Topic number ten: Kino to go. <laughs> Be good for you. Walk across the street. <laughs> Hatfield Market, which is the recent market on School Street that opened up, um, has applied for a Kino to Go game. And actually, I received education from Linda the other day on how this works. I had to get my computer on the to get okay. information. <laughs> um, Unless the Board of Selectmen has uh, any concerns or does not support this. Um, it's keynote to go. You just get a keynote ticket and you walk out. Of, no, that's it is, what it is. It, it, it's an app on your phone. Oh, yeah. So you can buy up to thirty games, walk away from the store, and then check your your app later. And then if you want, you can go back to the store and get your money or bet some. More you don't money. need to stay there no, and wait for there. the numbers to. Exactly. Wow, yeah. an yeah. app on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> It's Kino to go. If there is any objection from, from the board, we're required to submit a, a written letter to the state. I don't have any objection. So this is really, uh, I actually read through it. I, I know other larger cities have had this for quite some time, or some establishments have had it for quite some time. So, so basically, this is just letting us know they're applying for it, but we're not mm -hmm. giving permission or not giving permission. Is that fair to say? Yeah. They, yeah. Only if, if we were against it, the lottery exactly, would then Exactly, then say, they would okay. like right. to hear from you. Okay, all right. right. Um, I personally don't so, have a problem either. I mean, okay. Whatever they need to help their business, I guess. There's no tickets thrown on the ground. Saving paper. You don't have people hanging Trash. around the store. Right. <laughs> That's what you have to do. Okay, so, is, <coughs> so I don't know if we need a positive reply or not. Yeah. We don't need to. Oh, Only if no you responses. object. If you don't support it, no news we would news. need to send a letter. Got it. The board okay. would be required to yep. address a letter, right? So you don't need to do anything if if you're okay with it. Like no action. Okay. No. Right. Uh, topic eleven. Yep. Okay. Oh, we just sort of. We well, just. We yes. So actually, we, we are just, going to review the. The, the, so this is the community compact grant, the financial policies that we talked about earlier with the finance committee. Mm -hmm. So we ultimately have to vote on it, but we're just going to take the time for indi to individually go through the policy Correct. ourselves and come up with any questions Correct. we may have. Right? And I'd, I'd just like to add that there is a new initiative um, that um, I had spoke to at a previous meeting um, for the next grant round, uh, Commonwealth compact grant round. And um, I had the Board of Selectmen had submitted a letter of intent and commitment. This was for a uh, regional regionalization and efficiency finance director. Right. Um, I was notified that the town is not eligible for th that type. However, there is another application process. We can apply just as a single sure. town. Um, so I would recommend that we, we do that. I, I would agree. It's too bad we weren't uh, you know, chosen but mm -hmm. as part of the larger group. But I, I, okay. you know, I, I'll do I that. think it's important to at least uh, have yeah, somebody I with, I agree with financial that financial yes. uh, okay. background. Yeah. It is, are, you, are you confident that we have a shot at this one? It wouldn't be the same reason I, they rejected the first one? <sighs> Because the state, I, I yeah. well, I and I was pretty optimistic um, about the the first um, 
because it just seems to me that the original we need it more than most towns do right now because of the financial and, situation but that's what's and, and, preventing us from having it and that's right? why i feel very strongly that we should apply i i don't there aren't any guarantees um well the only guarantee is if you don't apply you're not going to get it oh well that you're right yeah absolutely so i think i what i'm saying is it's it's certainly worth how soon does that one come up um, are we going to be in a new, better financial picture when this one comes up where we have a better shot? Well, my understanding is we can submit this Already? immediately. So we're still kind of um, whole. Yeah. So, but I, I will find out what the, the deadline is. Well, so maybe what we can do is find out the, um, the, the deadline, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. key, obviously. And then uh, in the application, exactly. Um, I don't know if you've seen it yet, Marlene, or seen an app, you know, I, and then find out exactly what they asked for in the application, because mm -hmm. we, um, you know, to, to Cindy's point, um, you know, we don't want anything to maybe hold us back. By the same token, we're, you know, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, so right. so maybe it's maybe it's a timing thing as to what that's, they ask mm -hmm. and when it's due, and maybe we can, you know, move forward that way. That's true, yeah. Yeah, no, I do understand. Uh, Here's the contract you were talking about. I would ask that, um, so the board had uh, awarded the yeah. project to Omasta and that was signed. Omasta has returned it. I was hoping to have the contract tonight for the board to approve and sign. Um, and I had reached out to Omasta today and they said that they're still um, waiting to just pull some information together and as soon as they receive it it's possible I may the board because we need to get the contract approved by November 25th but I mean when we last meeting when we approved this contract the condition was they were you awarded to, the contract we awarded at our price uh, uh, the amount of money that we had, right. not over what it was. Correct. And, and then they were going to go back and talk That's to right. Master. And, and they did and, meet. And, and they did meet. We and met, they, met last okay. week. So, so, so why, I think, well, so, I don't know. So is this number going to be any less, I guess, is what you're thinking, like we talked about? Right, right. It, it, it would no. be. Mm -mm. We, we didn't sign it. We didn't sign didn't it sign with the contract. caveat of, we didn't vote on it with the caveat of, but it's got to come down to the maximum of you, whatever it was, 180 or 190,000. Right, 000 or right. right. You, you voted to award the project based yep. on their bid right. um, submission. For right, and Rich was going to speak with them. Right. right. And, um, but then now there's the actual contract. So we need the real number on. when it Correct. comes back? All right. Okay, so why don't we, uh, 25th is next, it's the Saturday hoping, after Thanksgiving, so. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping next Monday or Tuesday. Why don't you schedule a meeting for Tuesday, if, or, or Monday, whatever, I, okay. you know, right. I would say Tuesday if possible, if Cindy's okay. available, just make it at one o'clock or something, okay. or two o'clock, yeah, it doesn't matter just, to me. It would just so let's be get the it on contract. The books, and sure. then, then we know it's there. Okay. Yeah, I just hate to schedule it for Monday, and then on Monday we find out it's not gonna be until Tuesday, and right. then there's nothing we can do about it, right. so. I, I don't know what your schedule is on Tuesday. I think we want to stay away from the day before Thanksgiving. Yes. Who knows where people are. So. Mm. so so what happened? Do you know what happens if we, for whatever reason, they don't get us the contract by next week? Is it we starting over again? No, no. <laughs> we could probably file, you know, an extension. Okay, all right. I just... is, the, is the hold up the amount? Is that... No, well, they just needed it? to reach out to one of their subcontractors to um, to get a, you know a number, a firm confirmed number from them, and, and pro probably a the, probably a number and maybe the scope right. So in, you know, instead of fifteen lights, you're going to put in ten because these five are going to equal this much money. So we're going to lower it that or way. The I mean, it's all the benches. So, benches. right, and they're taking the benches out because they're looking at doing a fundraiser. Right. But um, they're reaching out to the concrete. Uh, okay. Some so contractor a regarding that have to paving. Get back to it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seeing what they all can do as a company, mm -hmm. and then put it all together. Yeah, I talked to Kathy Omasta one. today, okay. um, and she said as soon as she receives the information, she'll send it to us. All right. And I so let her know that we were looking at Monday or Tuesday. I would at the tell her Monday yeah. or Friday okay. of this week, 
And, but let's plan on our meeting on Tuesday. Are you guys available at pretty much any time on Tuesday? One o'clock's you know? good. One o'clock's good. Let's see what Cindy's schedule is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm cold. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm going to get cold outside. All right. Uh, topic 13. Yes. As we plug along reviewing the HR policy manual, um, we're at section four, code of conduct, and I have reviewed it. I don't have any recommendations other than under section 4.2, personal integrity and this is applicable to the Massachusetts conflict of interest. Employees are required to um, take the online state ethics mm -hmm. education um, training. So I insert, I recommended that that be inserted. Okay. That's additional I mean, even we have to, to do add that as elected officials. As elected, to, but this doesn't apply to the elected. No, no, I know, but, HR, yeah, but even yes, we have to have do that. To you know, Lydia appointed. sends us a thing every year to, yeah. to do our thing. So Everybody does. Um, and certainly open to any suggestions or further recommendations under Section 4. So does your copy yeah. have it in red? Doesn't. No. So 4.2 on the first page. Yeah. The very last sentence it says employees are required to complete the online state ethics conflict of interest law education and training. I'm recommending that be added to this. I don't think it's on my copy. You don't? No, I don't either. You don't? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I must have. I. You know what? You're right. I printed out this prior to inserting this. So unless so that's unless my, my recommendation. So unless my colleagues have that. something, which is fine. Correct. I, I'm I'm good with that. So everything else is basically as we have it, and we're going to add that yes. sentence about the conflict of interest. Yes. Okay. Right. And I did check; it does coincide with everything under two sixty eight twenty three mm -hmm. from the clerk. So mm -hmm. it's very similar, but just um, not the legalese, I guess, right, which makes right. it easier to understand. So I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Covers most of it and leaves because mm -hmm. you can't cover everything. So okay, I like it. Okay, so yeah. I don't so, have a problem with that. Okay, so we probably need a motion because we're making a change to that section. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll make a motion to accept the code of conduct section four of the human resource policy as updated by Marlene. Okay, I'll, by Marlene, I'll second that. Yes, that, that sounds good. Okay, so there's a motion um, made and seconded. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Marlene. You're welcome. Okay. Topic 14, 14, update on the server. Quick update on the upgrade of the server. As you know, this was a, a capital project. Um, that upgrade is pretty well complete. Uh, part of the upgrade involves uh, migrations with current software applications, um, Infinite Vision, which is used for AP and payroll, and that was completed last week. The next software application to be migrated over to the new server is The Point, um, and that the, uh, I, Paragus IT is looking to schedule that um, in a week. Uh, and I believe then... The last software application is in the assessor's office. Uh, so we certainly did have some bumps throughout the process. Um, I have reviewed those, those issues, and, and I feel those, they were serious, serious enough to be raised. Um, I had a telephone conference with the president of Paragus IT and our uh, accounts manager and um, they you know were very sorry for for the um, the inconveniences I mean there were some inconvenience and, and, and you do expect there to be maybe some some hiccups yeah. um, but you know they they were serious ones um, yeah, there's more than a hiccup yeah, yeah. there's I mean, a lot it, of stuff lost it, and days of work lost right and, and it, it slowed down um, work workflow progress 
Um, so they they are they are aware that that we are not happy with that. There's just a lot of little things that oh. came in. Um, just to, you know, it, was, it wasn't just one thing; it was compounded. Uh, I was supposed to be here at nine o'clock for them to update mine, which is fine. I came in at nine. At ten ten ten, they told me, "Oh, we're going to get to you next, just ten fifteen minutes." Well, ten to fifteen minutes became like almost one thirty, and I left. You know, and yeah. I said, "This is here," and then got a call. Mm. I left the laptop. I left the door open. Up the password. You know, for the chief's office over here. I get a call at one thirty. Um, they need the power cord for the laptop. Now the laptop's in the bag. The power cord's in the bag. The, it's the two items in there, you know, and not being complete, you know, any computer was by any means. I mean, how can you not find the power cord in the same bag with the laptop? Yeah. You know, it's it's a computer bag. It's not right. like it's hidden in a big bag or something. And it was just really a disappointing experience. And, and there were lots of those types of things. There were. They were adding up. Just to give you one, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. one example. Yeah. But, um, they were adding up. And but there was stuff lost. There was things, you know, a project I was working on was completely yeah. lost. Um, there was, you know, you couldn't work a couple of days on different things. And Data the computer, and I believe that week the computer went down four times. Yeah, yeah it had some uh, big bumps. Of course, mm -hmm. you know that the worst email to get, Cindy, right? Is from your IT department when they say, but you can't get them because no, it's no. not working. Here, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be an upgrade taking place this weekend, <laughs> but it won't affect anything. <laughs> that's that's like the kiss of death. Mm -hmm. But that well, that would have been better because they didn't send an email out for people to shut it down. That was one of the was started the problem. There was no email yeah. sent. They probably should to have everyone. Everybody. It went to some people, but not everyone. Yeah. All right. Well, Marlene, thank you for taking the. Uh, the bull by the I mean, the, they Paragus say, is concerned, the, you know, about how the, the whole thing was handled, and they're handling it internally. Um, it, it just didn't help our relationship because we've no, already, well, we've you been, know. We've, been, we've had this kind of relationship <laughs> over the last few years. Absolutely. Uh, so they are doing something next week? Is that what you said? Another? They will, be, they will do the migration for, um, for point software. So I would imagine that there's lots of eyes on this, oh, not only yeah. internally from us and, and you, mm -hmm. but on the Paragus side of things, right? I mean, yeah. they, you know, do we know when they're doing it? They have not done okay. set a date to do that Well, the yet. other disappointment with me is, because you know how I feel about it, is we get their services through the HCOG or the HCG, and that's part of the problem. And there's been a couple instances where, and I know you caught one and had them change it, there was that extra surcharge on some of the service that there wasn't supposed to be, mm -hmm. and then refused to pay it. Right. Well, I think the billing's one issue. I, I, I don't think we can put but, the but Paragus that's, issue of, of, the, of the computer issues on, on each card. Right? We're you know, not saving with them, is my point. We're losing valuable dollars, hours, work for work. Okay. That. And that's, that, that's all I have on that matter. Okay. So what we haven't addressed yet, because we ran into some uh, timing issues with meeting with the assessors and then with the uh, I think finance committees, but we, we haven't well, talked about the, um, the cleaning, the cleaning contract. So do you want to wait till uh, our next I'd like, meeting? I'd like to make some comments on topic. Yeah, yeah. I, I did get no, a no, text no, from Tony. He Can I? That, yeah, that's okay. So that's that's why okay, he's not be, here. Before we, yeah, no, that's okay. fine. Before well, we do that, Cindy, Tony had you, a text that he had to leave. Did you check that Tuesday so. date? I saw you uh, yeah, I had one thing. What time did you want to do it? Doesn't matter. We're not. We're going to need like a half hour. Tops. One, one o'clock. You wanted. So you want to discuss it at the one o'clock? No, 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 no. Just, just he wanted. I'm, I'm just trying to set the meeting up. One o'clock would be Cindy okay. Checking her phone. Can you talk one is one o'clock okay? Tuesday, right? Yes. Yeah. One o'clock. That is good. okay. Yeah. All right. So I let's let's have that post. You know. Okay. For, one o'clock next to Tuesday. To do the um, big wise at ten. One o'clock will be open. Okay. What? Big Y will be open. I thought he said Big Y, and then I thought, no, I must have heard him y. wrong. <laughs> Are you old enough? Somehow I get there every Tuesday. And Are you old enough yet? No. So you <laughs> think I'd be smart enough to stop going on Tuesdays when everybody else, oh, when is, everybody there. else is there? And they're going to get rid of it in just next month, too. Yeah, they're not doing the 10% off. Oh. They're ending it in next month. December. <coughs> That's yep. what I heard. I oh. don't do Happy that. Happy holidays, <laughs> customers. <laughs> All right, so so our, that meeting will be on Tuesday at one o'clock okay. to discuss the Smith Academy Park. But if, yeah. if you would just let them know they need to have a, the information by you know 
Friday if they can, or Mon mm -hmm. Monday at the absolute latest. And, you know, just make up a date. Okay. So the last item um, on the posted agenda is to discuss the um, cleaning service contract. So the con the cleaning service that's currently being used contract expired. Um, was it the end of September, Marlene? Or uh, yeah. Yes, first, September thirtieth. September thirtieth. Um, but mm -hmm. the information on a, the board had not received until a week or two ago the, um, the information from the facilities department as to which company or which companies had applied, which companies were um, looking to become the next cleaning contract, the next cleaning company for uh, town hall and the surrounding buildings. So we, we did get that information finally. Um, and I know we're going to discuss it, but just, you know, to sort of preface it. So uh, there was a request sent out um, by, by, the, by the DPW department, um, by the director of the water department. Uh, the DPW director was not involved due, due to a potential conflict um, which may arise. So he just removed himself from the, uh, from the process. So... Tony had sent out requests for quotes, um, as well as reached out to some individual companies uh, and people that he knew had in the past shown an interest in performing the service, um, but in this instance did not report back that they were, that they were basically um, interested. So three bids came back, or, or three, yeah, three bids came back, or quotes, and they were from... Um, MAS Cleaning uh, Service, and I hope I pronounce, um, this is in response, by the way, to the, the bid request from the um, DPW department. Um, Feely, is that the right pronunciation? I don't know. Okay, Feely yeah, Richards. I'm not sure. And, um, and ServiceNet. So those three uh, companies or individuals had shown an interest and had submitted a quote as to what their uh, yearly fee would be. Since then, by the way, um, ServiceNet has withdrawn their proposal. So um, to, to be one of the, or, or to be the cleaning company. So we're at this point uh, in the discussion we'll, um, we'll pursue. Um, Feely Richards and MAS Cleaning are the two companies who have submitted bids that um, for the board of selectmen to discuss. Okay, my my I have some problems with the bidding okay. uh, under Mass General Laws Chapter 30B. Uh, you have a chief procurement officer, so if a town or governmental agency has a chief procurement officer, either the the chief procurement officer or that person's delegate is the one who's supposed to solicit bids. For some reason, uh, that didn't happen. Marlene is our chief procurement office. Linda's in training to be a uh, delegate, and I believe we have one uh, CPO that works for the assistant superintendent. Now, it, it's you, you got to follow... Mass General Laws. I mean, I don't think there was any intentional wrongdoing on how it went, but I think departments have to understand if you have a chief procurement officer, then all the bids should go through the chief procurement officer. The exception to that is if you have like a water transmission project, then the architect takes care of that. If you have contracts with Hampshire Council of Government, which we are part of, we can jump on those contracts, or if we have a contract with Staples. Now, talking to Marlene, because the correct process wasn't followed, that in itself could be grounds for not accepting any of the bids. So, at this, at this time, I'm thinking that maybe we should not accept any bids because I think it's in the best interest of the town, and I have another option at, that I'd like to discuss. I don't know if it's a time to discuss it, uh, the other option. So first, uh, I, 
I'd like to talk about that other option because I've done some research on it. All right. Yeah, I had. Um, I feel the same way. I'm not. I'm very concerned about the conflict of interest with this. If you um, look under 268. A section one, the conflict of interest law prohibits a municipal employee uh, from participating in a particular matter in which an employee or a member of his immediate family has a finan financial interest. That's under 268A, 19A. So you have the procurement end of it. You have the, this is from the ethics code. And then the code of conduct that we've just gone over, the law covers all municipal employees to ensure, among other things, that their private interests do not conflict with their public obligations. The law is broadly written to prevent employees from becoming involved in situations which could result in a conflict or give the appearance of a conflict. And also under Section 19, it's, um, this would generally extend to hiring, payroll compensation, supervisory, and or disciplinary decisions for immediate family members. Um, so coupled with that, I think both of these other things, the ethics and the code of conduct, both um, send up a lot of red flags that I think it's improper. We have, I don't believe, I don't know if um, the, the DPW per, um, personnel, either one, is, has any training or procurement ex you know, um, certification at all. So I have an issue with that, and also um, I was hoping they, that the representatives, of the, the, I know um, Tony got called out, I was hoping the DPW director would be here because I had some questions regarding it um, for him, but I need an explanation to go any further because there was the whole issue where there was three bids, then there was two bids, then there was three bids, and I spoke with not those aren't even the best because they're not here, and I'm hoping they can clarify because I don't want to say, oh, this is wrong or whatever, but I'd like them to clarify how on the 28th, now I haven't looked at any of these bids yet. This is still sealed. I didn't intentionally, and I don't know what they are, and until today I hadn't seen in writing who they were from, okay? And I specifically did that because I wanted to come in open and not know anything. Um, as to the specifics of who was bidding on it. But on the 28th, which the day the bids were due, okay, I spoke with representatives from the DPW department that said there was three bids and they told me which one was the highest, what the, in general, what the amounts were. And then the next day, an email is sent saying, no, oh, they only got two. Well, I think because so if somebody can because clarify, there wasn't and I'm wrong with those times, but I don't think I am because no. the email is timed and dated, mm. the phone call the information is timed and dated. So I don't know what happened there. I'd like that to be explained. Hopefully, it's just a mistake. Um, but well, that's another that's another good reason, right? And the email understand. says there's they only received two. What I I don't know what email you're referring to. So. Uh, the one that was sent from the DPW to the town administrator. I mean, right now there's the a simple they they process me. that I think all the departments need to know. It's, it's pretty easy. You, the, the departments want a widget. They want a widget three feet high, and you want so many of them. You, you write the specifications. You send it to the chief procurement officer. The chief procurement officer sends it out to bids, and then they come back. Of course, you're in charge of your contract, but, um, but that department's supposed to get the specs, but make sure it goes through our chief procurement officer because these are where conflicts happen when, when you take part of Chapter 30B and somebody else does it that's not that familiar with it and takes bits and pieces, these are the problems that happen. I don't think that happened at all. So let me address personally one question first. I don't see any conflict of interest at all. The person who would have had a conflict of interest has recused himself from this entire process. If, if you're referring to the director. Right, and I just read to you why there would be, what the, what the ethics code says. It's the same as when we've had selectmen who have had employees that are relatives in town. They just remove themselves from any sort of conversation or any sort of voting or any sort of anything that takes place. So you don't think there was any pressure and one day there's three bids and then the next day We have day three bids and I, I, 
I can't, I can't, I didn't send the email, so I don't know where's two or three. Would you I, like you to know? see it? Do you have, I, I'm not, no, what, I, what I'm I, saying, can, I can show it to you. What I'm saying is one email said there were two bids, according to you, and we have, we had three bids. That. So then I don't, I don't see what the issue is. Everything comes in and gets stamped, right, in the, in the secretary's office. Is that what happens if, if, if a mail, if a mail, a bid? Following the, that protocol, yes. Like, especially when it comes to a bid. Like, when we did the Smith Academy project, all of those bids I stamped, put on a spreadsheet, yeah. time, you date, said you were gonna bring that, right? when they came in. Right. When I had requested copies of the, uh, the quotes, and right. there, what I received were two. And actually... But there ended up being three. There ended up being three. So, so whatever... You were right, referring one to, was, I think, was one was well, not picked up after, in the mailbox. Correct. Was picked up in the mailbox. Correct. Okay. Correct. I mean, I don't know if there's a fourth one. Right? But know. it was found in a mailbox. But how could you tell me the day before that you had three, and then the next day there's only two, and then you find it 24 I, hours you, later I, in the mailbox? I, I I can't speak to that. Well, that's I mean, that's I don't, what I'm saying, and that's part of the reason wrong, everything but. should go through the chief procurement officer. Then well, if the bid's under no, fifty thousand dollars. It doesn't have to go to the chief procurement officer. I'm not saying it shouldn't. I'm just saying it doesn't have to. That's my understanding, but 30B is a long interpretive thing. It's done all the well, time. Well, the bigger thing, but, you know. It's done but, all the time. And, and we wouldn't have had that happen and bring these questions in. And I don't know why the DPW director left. Um, because he, he didn't. can't speak. It, he can't speak to the cleaning service. No, not well, not regarding just that. He usually gives an update when he's here. I'm not sure why he left. Because we were going to discuss the cleaning service as item number four. That's why we and did that. So that's why any, he left. There wasn't going to be any DPW update like he gave the abatement other, and the um, no, that was just, five. That's not the update. Five. Um, Cindy, every that's other, what's on the DPW other, director report. That's what's on the agenda. Yes, it is. He covered those on the agenda. But I noticed there was no report today, so I was going to ask him why there wasn't. Because I, had I don't to... know I, what, I don't know what report okay. you're referring. You All mean right. an update All on right. projects? You okay. mean? Is that what you mean? All right. I, I just don't know what. No. You okay. Gave a no. Let me skip. Let me just go back. I'll, I'll, I won't even bring that one up. I won't even bring that one up. I do have some for old business, but. Well, we wait till we get to old business though. Yeah. No. No. I want it. Like I said, I, I do have old business for later. I don't want anybody to leave. But. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just put the warrants if you wouldn't mind to be signed. Sorry. Excuse me. Are you also? Okay. Are you? Okay. What I want to do, because you keep telling me you don't know what I mean and you don't understand or whatever. Okay, bids had to be in on 9, 928 in the morning. 928.17. Okay. I believe it was 9 o'clock, right? Actually, they had. What time is it? I think it was 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, thank you. Not, 2 o'clock, 1400 in the afternoon. At 1443, I'm told they received three bids. Okay? Yeah. The next day, do you have that email right there? I'll give you the time. The same party on 929 emails the town administrator. That's where the 9 o'clock came in, I think, right? Right. Um, so Friday at noontime, I sent an email. Okay. So, so Friday, approximately noontime, there's an email that says two bids came in. So if three bids came in at 1443 the day before, and now he's saying that only two bids came in, how can that be? Maybe he typed it wrong, Cindy. That's what I said. That's what I said to you. Did I say to you, I hope this no. is an error? Yes, I did. You just sat here I and said, why were there three, then there were two, then there were three. And I said to you twice before that, that's why I'm writing it down. Well, I can see because, it. The paper's okay, big enough. Good. Because yeah. I said to you twice before that, I hope it's a mistake. I hope somebody can, can explain this. It's too bad Tony left. I'm sorry. And I think what I said left. was, and we ended Maybe up with, after the 29th, with three bids. So I don't understand your point. Okay, if this was a typo, because if this was a typo, if this was a typo, of two. Are they listed there? Where's three. the email? 
And we ultimately ended up with three. We're back where we started on the day that they were supposed to be submitted. That's. But this one says they just found it. It was lost in the mailbox. So how could you have three the previous day at two if all of a sudden I just found well, it at 12 yeah. the next day? Yeah, get them, so get them in here at the next I'm, meeting to have the conversation. And I hope I mean, it's a mistake, but I'm saying if everything sure it is. like the law says that goes to the chief procurement officer, we don't have 15 hands in the pot doing it and everything is streamlined. Well, there's one hand more in the pot doing it, not 50, but. Point made to, to add, So to we add. wouldn't even have that problem at all Point. with those concerns if it was done that way. Now, previously it had been done that way. And I think you had concerns that Marlene had a lot of work. I do. I, and gave it to the DPW does. director. Well, because it was actually a request for and based off of a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth, but off of a, a suggestion that had been sent to them as here's what you want to look for when you're doing this request, because we did one last year. I, you know. But why partially through would it be taken from the town administrator? I don't understand that. All right, Phil had asked me to just send him this um, scope of services that I had solicited last right. year. Right. There's no, um, there, there's no smoking gun here. The, the idea is the DPW director is the facilities manager. Facilities manager, collectively, we've agreed that we're getting a new service to replace the existing one. Sent out the bids, and the bids came back. Mm -hmm. The DPW director, for trying to avoid any potential conflict of interest, because an, uh, a relative had worked here in the past, just removed himself from being part of the yeah, bidding but he, process. But he should have said, let's go through the chief procurement officer to make sure it gets done right. Absolutely. Uh, if, if he thought in any way there was a conflict, he should have said, make sure we do it right. And that wasn't done. And that's why I'm saying I'm not accepting any of these bids because it didn't fall. And that's, Ed, the that's first fine. time the first time the bids were sent out, all the information that, that's was fine. not complete. That's fine. We can rebid it. As I said, I, it, that's, it, it was more of a there's enough on what was happening, but you, I you mean, know, we Tony's, can do it anyway. Tony is wants. good. At, that part's fine. Tony is good doing water treatment. He should be doing. I mean, that's what he was hired for. He wasn't hired to do procurement stuff. I mean, I don't want to set up our workers to fail. And, and you set up your workers to fail when you, we give them responsibilities that they're not familiar with or haven't had training in. So I think it's wrong to, to make sure. And as far as the DPW director, maybe we should be looking at his scope of work because I think he's pretty busy. He's always out and about checking this and checking that. So maybe that should be a future meeting to look at, are we overburden him with all this other stuff too? That's all I'm saying. So, I mean, I, I don't want our workers to fail and, and by doing it this way, we're setting them up for failure because we wouldn't be having this conversation if the processes were followed, that's all. And what a, one question I had, if um, anyone else remembers, three meetings ago, I believe it was that um, I believe it was the town administrator that brought up, why don't we have an employee do that, okay? Um, for years and years, we had a janitor here, Frank Godick, uh, Roland. It was years and years, and the place looked great. The place looked great. Okay, we discussed that, and we said, yes, we should consider that, and then all of a sudden, it was a service again, and there's been input, and we've gotten input from other offices in here, and... Um, Basically, they're saying if we had a janitor here, okay, you would have a, a lot better, cleaner building, you'd have a lot more communication, and they could do other things. Right now, a service comes in, they mop the floors, they clean the bathrooms, and that's pretty much it. If somebody needs a light bulb changed, they have to call the DPW. If they're busy, it doesn't happen, that change. They have to call the DPW if there's no toilet paper in the bathroom. They have to get someone separate to shovel the walk. That was all covered by a janitor, and everything was done, and the place looked great. You, c you come in here now, it's basically, and there's been several complaints over the last few years of the two services that they've had, and it just doesn't look good. This is a new building, I, basically, like with all the renovations. I've done some number crunching with Marlene, looking at possibilities for what you're paying for now you could actually have a person eight to two 
uh, that does all those services. In addition to that, they would do the ramp, keep it clean. It's a, it, clean the windows if you needed, uh, help set up election thing, help the COA. Uh, they could uh, talk to Jane and Marlene. You could have it set up where they come in at eight, they do vacuuming before people come up here. Council of Aging has all their activities in the morning. They have lunch. Afterwards, they could do all the cleaning down there. They could uh, help with Council of Aging set things up. And looking at the numbers, uh, right now, what you're paying for, then you pay somebody to clean the lamp. Then you pay somebody to clean the window. So it's actually cheaper, and they get ownership. They actually care about the building. They care about the people here. And if you get the right people, it works. Because right now, the way it's working is Marlene is sort of taking care of the stuff upstairs, and Jane is taking care of stuff in the ups downstairs. So I would strongly suggest that Marlene and Jane are on the hiring committee because they know the person they need. It's, it's a six-month probation. Yep. You're not locked into a one-year contract. If the person doesn't work out, you let them go. We're going to have construction starting. And then you can take that person instead of the cleaning business saying, okay, uh, we can't do anything. You can always say, hey, the library needs a little bit of help. That building needs a little bit of work. The windows need to be cleaned. So uh, I, when Frank Bunk was here, th this place sparkled. Yeah. And it's a jewel of our town. We put a lot of money into this building. We should maintain it right. One thing that I do know, my very first week on the board, is I got a, a lot of complaints about cleaning service for the town hall. The Council of Aging felt like nobody was taking care of it downstairs. And that's why, because I think it's cheaper in the long run, you're going to get ownership and the numbers sort of match up. We're in the budget of what you're presently paying. So that's that's my and speech. We and we discussed yeah. that three, three meetings ago, and we yeah. said, yes, let's look into a, you brought it up, a, a one single employee to do that. And the communication, we keep complaining about communication. And when there's complaints, in fact, um, when was it? Last month, I think, you received it um, from the, cleaning, the current cleaning company. And they kept saying they could not reach the facilities manager. They kept leaving messages and calling, and we're not getting a call back. You have so, you'd have somebody in here who n would find out the individual needs. If you have the company coming in at night, they don't know the individual needs for each room or what needs to be done or what's not done or what's not satisfactory. Right. I so. don't know how they can, um, and that's you know, just doing strange. a little bit of a devil's advocacy here. I don't know how they can, you know, a lot of the cleaning that takes place are in the offices themselves. So if people are in the office, I don't know how you can vacuum and go move around and, and do certain things that you can do at night when the offices are empty, right? Because you're not interrupting the employee. Well, Frank um, Bunk did a great job when he was well, here. <laughs> does, you know, I, I don't know who any of these people are. You guys have been around a lot longer than I have. I'm just saying, you know, the idea, I believe, from the facilities manager, who, by the way, determines or does the hiring, not the board of selectmen. But again, the facilities so if we're manager... So if we're going to add an employee to the DPW, I'd rather have somebody that can plow and cut grass and do things instead well, of push a mop I didn't, I didn't from 8 to 12, well, from 8 to well. 2. The, the, the facilities man manager can't even comment on this because he has a conflict. Right. He, and if, no, if, he, he if, can if it's not about and then you're going to have a particular I'd rather have it people. here under us everything. or under Marlene uh, to take care of cleaning. Why pay all this money and, and, not, and constantly have problems? Why pay all this money when you can get somebody between eight and two, it opens up the, uh, the options for people that have kids in school. So it opens up your pool even more besides just, you know, people that are retired to get, their, get a good person in here. Uh, it's not that we're adding an employee. You're, as far as cost-wise, as far as money, you're spending actually less and you're getting more services. So I don't see how... Uh, at the facilities manager, I'm not sure if the facilities manager is available to, to oversee the contract because every time I come down here, facilities manager's gone to either the garage or he's a hands-on or working on different things. So, I mean, it, it's just not working. It worked for how many years? 20, 20 years, at least that I'm aware of, 25 years, and I don't understand why it changed, and now there's all these problems with the change. 
what's the what's the difference? You know, it worked fine for 20, 25 years at least. The last few years that we went to a service, it did not work out well. So it, in my opinion, we need to go back. I don't know why it changed. If it wasn't broke, don't, don't it fix it. Either. So you've got to figure out if it goes to um, a town employee, you've got to figure out the, the number of hours, the wage, and well, what we're benefits. what we're calculating is 30 hours a week. Yeah. And we're calculating, Marlene ran some numbers with benefits. You're still under slightly what uh, the cost of the cleaning services are. In addition to that, you're also adding the ramp, which the DPW now won't have to do. You're adding uh, cleaning some of the windows, which doesn't have to be outsourced. You're, you're adding setting up at election time, which the cleaning service ain't going to do now. You're also adding uh, possibly some work at the library, because I think they're requesting two to four hours periodically, right? You got your emergency management building, so you definitely, I mean, it, it and Marlene ran some numbers. Do you have those numbers that you ran at? This is at 30 hours a week. This is 8 to 2. That was a few weeks back when I met with, um, yeah, with Brian me. and, and um, Phil. I had some numbers with me. So I was looking at a, an hourly range of 15.89 an hour to 17.75. I had looked at what the school department pays their custodians. So I thought roughly $16 an hour because we were talking about this facility or that was my recommendation if we were to hire a custodian, this facility, the emergency services, and possibly the library. At that time, I had inquired with Eliza um, if she was interested, and, and she said she may, may be interested in, in a few hours. Um, so I had, was factoring, you know, uh, I was looking at 40 hours for this building, emergency services, and, and the library. Um, and, and 40 hours may, may be too much. Um, I, I, even 30, um, I'm thinking it would be more than 30 anyway, but you know, could if it's something the board wants to consider, we can certainly, you know, look at a 30 hour position to start. Um, so anyway, at the okay, 60, anyway, so, so I was looking at um, about 33,000, that was before benefits. Oh. Um, so for a 40-hour employee at $16 an hour, um, roughly 33200 I believe. Yep. Um, the, the, the last contract paying, was, what, forty grand. we are paying $35,361 um, right now. And you're getting basic services. You're not even getting the ramp cleaned. You're not getting the windows cleaned. You're not getting the library done. You're not getting a lot of stuff. You're just getting basic stuff. I've, I've gotten at least three emails, I think, on rotted toilet paper again, or the light bulbs again. I've got at least four emails on those. I think everybody else has, too. You're but if somebody, email? But if somebody was here to do them, yes. It'd be oh. done. Complaints in the building. If, if somebody's here, yeah, you know what the needs are ahead of time. And you're here all the time. You're not coming in for a couple hours at night. Because um, how many hours does the service do, do you know? It's not based on hours. It's not hours. based on hours, no. yeah. But again, you're getting a lot more hours for it because I believe they do could just come in for a few hours in the evening. So to have somebody here 30 hours is at least double. Right, they come in Monday through Friday um, and they're here in the evenings. Is there six hours of work a day for someone to do? Um, really? I for mean, just this building? Yeah. Uh, I don't think six hours. Um, that's 30 hours a week. Well. So. So, so part of part of my point is, if we're going to hire if we're going to hire somebody an, an employee, I'd rather have somebody a, a hired benefited employee out being able to do town wide things. That that's how I'm looking at it. Well, she um, mentioned you know if there's a thirty hour employee the here, I, I mean you know we can come up with enough activity, you know, enough things for the person to do, that's, that's fine. But it's, you know, it's just, it's not that big a building to, to use up six hours a day. I mean, how many times can you clean a window or mop a floor? That's well, I all. Think I think, I think we need public, a bigger. She well, said also the public safety and the library, Right, I was just going to say, venues. besides this building, Who didn't even want anybody over services, there. The police department has expressed, um, 
Just the police department. No, inter yeah, right. They're not interested. And fire. Um, but fire, I think, would, the, the training room, they would like to see the floors um, cleaned, mopped, um, and the bathrooms cleaned. And the library is requested some assistance, too. And the COA is, I mean, you got all that traffic in the morning, and then in the afternoon you got all. The library is particularly interested in um, somebody during the um, spring and summer grounds. Mm -hmm. Um, they just don't really have people to, to maintain the outside. But even for that many... The basic maintenance, the DPW should be doing that. Cutting grass, and if that's, I don't know what they're referring to. I mean, that's a town building. That's what the DPW should be doing. The library is one of those buildings that they should be taking care of, mm -hmm. for sure. But even if, with 30 hours, if we're getting more services for less money, it, it still makes sense. over 20. <clears throat> Anyways, that's my thoughts. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> well, so 30 hours, if I did the math correctly, is about 26,000 a year. Correct. Plus whatever Would be, benefits yeah. they, you know, whatever the cost for the benefits right. are. And at 40 hours, 40, I had, at it would 16 be about, hours, I'd come up with 33,002 right. or something. Yep. Yeah. Plus, you know, plus benefits. With benefits, right? P plus benefits. That's around 33. So I would say, yeah. Which is still right. under so the amount. That's what, what I said. You're still paying, less, and you still and get you, more and services. And you get more services. Uh, you know, and I'm wondering if there's not a, a, an option C, and I don't know what that is. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that is we're about to enter a construction phase in this building. So I don't know. It's going to it, whether be, it's 30 hours or 40 hours or 100 hours, I mean, I don't know how much work somebody, so, whoever it is, is going to be able to do in this particular building come spring. Well, well I, I don't know if we can do a To me, a even partial. more with a mess because when they tried to put the cables through the offices downstairs, it was a huge mess, and the DPW had said they were going to come back and clean it up, and they didn't. The they cleaning, never did. The cleaning service ain't going to come dusting. more than once. No. You may have a, we'll if you have constantly. a town custodian, they may have to come a couple of times to clean up because as much as they try to protect areas, this I mean, we went happen. through a billion dollars worth of construction on campus. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the janitors are busy. There's more. Uh, the and then even if, if the area is blocked off, now you can send the janitor over to the library. You can send a janitor over there. You can have the janitor go do the windows, do the ramp. I mean, the cleaning service will come in and say, oh, we don't have to do anything tonight. It's it's all blocked off. See ya. So, I mean, it's how you look at it. Yeah. I just thought of, you know, they had an option C. Oh, I <laughs> just, just, thought, just of. thought of like tiles having to clean, basically clean out just the entire office. I don't know if any of you have been down there, but that is a million years worth of documents. Yeah. A million years <laughs> worth of documents and papers right. and everything mm. else. That could be a full-time job for somebody for like a month, yeah. really easily. Yeah. So I'm just thinking, okay, so how many boxes of, look at Derek's office, how many boxes of files there are? I don't know how much moving, they're saying that, that everyone's going to have to move. Well, I know I'm not a heavy lifter, but um, it, it, you're kind of, you know, asking a lot of folks to be lifting these heavy file boxes if we could get someone in that could assist in that, um, That's a good point. not just cleaning, but also um, relocating. We should probably get a moving, moving company to do that or moving. some sort of a... Yeah, I don't know, but it's, it's a Your lot. point, that, that, that is, and I can tell you from experience when the chief and I moved over to the public safety building, used a hand truck, we moved everything ourselves, the bookcases, everything, and the cleaning service came in and yelled at me and wanted to know who filled up that trash can. So I think the janitor would have more, a janitor here would have more invested, you know. Never asked for any help to move, we moved it all ourselves, but still took heat from, for filling up the trash can with stuff we weren't taking. And when Henry Sherbusky was a janitor here, he was doing Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he was also the chief. So part-time janitor, part-time part -time police chief. chief. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. That's right. And if it's too many, well, 
You'd want to start at less hours if you, if you consider 20, but I don't think 20 is going to be enough. I think it, I think it needs to be 30. But Do we want to revisit us at our next meeting at 1 o'clock? I just think that part when of the job description has to include the ability to lift boxes right, right. over 50 pounds. Usually over 50 pounds, plus let work off a ladder to change a light bulb. Yeah, I mean, you like you got to incorporate that stuff. That. Yes. So I was a little bit like, okay, that's a job, this job description I could do, but mm -hmm. lifting boxes. Mm -hmm. And that did come into it was one of the trash cans that the well, service couldn't move them if, into. If an office needs something moved and periodically DPW. they do. DPW, DPW comes, is yeah. contacted and they take time out of their day to Right. So now you're in and using DPW and you're mm -hmm. instead of them doing what they're supposed to be doing. And but that's what happens with the ramp, that's what happens with, with shoveling, everything. that's what happens with some other stuff around here. I mean even to put up a poster you gotta get DPW. If you had a person here they could put the poster up for you. I mean it just I mean what what is the problem with at least try going back trying it for a year because you're gonna you're gonna pay less and see how it works I don't know I, I just know that there's continual complaints on how uh, cleaning service works on this building and there has been for for what they tell me the last few years so it, it's a if we go back with a cleaning service those complaints are going to continue and you know they are so there is a couple offices that don't have the cleaning service clean their offices for security reasons. Yes. There's been some other issues that yes. I was informed of that. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Unless you require a cleaning service, and I don't know that they would do that, anybody would do that, but if, unless you require a cleaning service to perform uh, a certain number of, of hours daily, or, or late afternoon, evening. Um, it wouldn't matter. I still think that defeats the purpose of what we need. Well, you could get a cleaning service during the day. Just say these are the hours. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, you, I think that part, this was before I was on the board. I believe part of it was, and I'm, I don't know this, but I would assume that part of having them come in afterwards were because people were complaining at the time that the cleaning service was trying to clean while they were doing their work. No, so, that's, those weren't the complaints I got. No, be, no, no. Not now they weren't. They could have been back then, though, is my point as to why it went to a nighttime thing. Yeah, but you look at the size of an office, it's not going to take you more than 10 minutes to vacuum an office, if that. And if it's that noise that it bothers, I can't imagine any other noise, except any place if they strip the floors or wax them once a year. I don't know. I, I worked in an office my whole life, and nobody ever vacuumed or cleaned while I was sitting there taking calls from 8 to 5. That's how offices work. I worked in an office oh. where they did, so. Yeah. And it was fine. They came in, they vacuumed. We were on the phone with customers. A couple minutes and but, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm just, again, I'm pointing out other, other aspects of, of what we've all have for our own individual backgrounds and exposure, so. At least we're a board that can agree to disagree anyways. <laughs> That's how it's got to be. It's the only way it's going to work. It's the only way it's going to work. We're going to agree we're sometimes, and we're going to disagree That's sometimes. Right. That's we're all. all human. That's okay. I think. <laughs> I hope so. I don't know. I'm kind of the bionic limbs oh, right now. I'm no, not quite human. Well, so obviously there's no movement on, on this now. So, right. Um, I, I mean, the only thing I can say, Cindy, to your one of your earlier comments is the three to two back to three is I don't think anybody other than the person who sent the email can answer that question right. for you. And that's, so. that's why I hope they were here so they could explain because I, I just want it to be wrong. You know, but, well, and he, a he, had to, he had to leave, but, you know, I don't know. So. But, but we need to get moving on this. Yes, we do. Because whether it's Tuesday or tonight, I mean, we need to, Especially we've got a company working currently weather. without without a contract. So, Especially with the messy weather coming. Yes. Every day, yes, somebody throw ice melt and all that other stuff. That's, so, um, and that's why don't we have this as a... outside is throw the ice melt and make sure it's, shovel, you know. Why don't we put this on for, if it's agreeable with these guys, for Tuesday, Marlene, okay. along with, so it'll be the contract for Smith Academy Park mm -hmm. and discussion about... Um, cleaning okay. service at, well, town hall yes. predominantly, but mm -hmm. um, town buildings. So do you want 
and I think. I think we'll discuss that They're on saying Tuesday. They want to discuss the cleaning contract. Right. Right. In right. case there's changes that um, that come. Yeah. Okay. So, do we just agree to disagree then and move on? Oh, um, <laughs> okay. for this topic. So you're going to follow yeah, uh, up. You're going right. to have so, further discussion on, um, next Tuesday. No, I think Cindy has something else. Yeah, just oh, oh, you're looking to oh, see okay. if so, um, we're all set with that. Okay. So yes, that's it for the agenda. So is there, so is there any old business? Yes. Okay. Marlene handed this to me on the way in. Okay. So that's why it's not on there. Um, this was what we discussed about the car that was damaged out back. Yep. The estimates and the costs. Or not the estimates, but the actual cost. Okay. Yep. So present that to the board to look at. I just got it. I didn't read the whole thing because uh, she handed it to me on the you way You know, we're going to look at the dollar amount first anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's the, much better than I the, think the way this was starting off. Yeah. So right here, right? That and that. What? So the one on the 80 up here at plus yep. the 91. But, and I would no, I think I think that's both. The other one. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. I knew there was two. Okay. So I haven't, I haven't read it yet. All right. So I'll make a motion to uh, give her a check for that amount. Are we? Uh, it, uh, I'll second it for discussion. For discussion. Okay. okay. So all I would say is I I don't have a problem with that. But are we going to try to get this? Like, is it worth trying to get this amount of money from the um, contractor? Yeah. From the contractor, or just do this now and Why send a letter and see what happens to the contractor. Why don't we? Well, my, my opinion is we say yes on it. We ask the yeah, facilities, that's what I mean. the, the DPW director, to yep. what he, you know, where he wants it I'm to with go you. here okay. or there. Okay, so motion made and seconded in to uh, reimburse the employee for the damage done to their car with the paving out back. Uh, is there any further discussion? No. No, I mean I, I do like the idea we. We can pay the employee for the damage yeah, to the car. Yeah, I think that's fair. Go back Let's after. See if we can get it. Get reimbursed. Back after yeah. the uh, car. So it's under $100 for those of you on TV who were wondering. But um, So that's good. I didn't know where that was. I didn't know where that was heading when I saw the original pictures. Okay. Any other old business? Okay. So we're going we to vote? ask Everybody oh, the sorry. facilities oh, director is, to yeah. reach out to the I, yes, contractor? Yes, please. So okay. all, all those in favor? Did I already say that? I didn't yeah, say no. that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Yes, so we're look, we, we want to reimburse that. Sure. The Ourselves. Or right. the top, yeah. And then have the DPW see Send if you get reimbursement to, from the contractor. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would, um, is there any other old business? Is that new? Not for me. That was it. Oh, all right. That was it. So I, I think that um, for our meeting on Tuesday, that um, because Cindy, I think, has questions still uh, of the director themselves, and that traditionally or normally the facilities manager does the hiring, whatever that hiring is, for the cleaning service. Well, that's it, for a discussion. They should be there. But so you don't want the... You don't want not going to work. See, I don't think that's... <laughs> it's going to work. Not normally, because we've only had a cleaning service for a couple of years. It's always been an employee. So it, it's not normally... But, but the facilities like, themselves are... I mean, I the think schools the are under fill. Everybody's under fill now, all the buildings. If the water treatment um, operator wants to come in, that would be great. Because I think he can explain that. It, it won't work. It won't work if the water treatment... Overseas custodians, because he wasn't. No, if he just no, comes no, no, in to I'm, explain, I'm, I'm if you have about any questions, the, yes. Yes, about the discussion. I, I think about since the that's the their department, they should be. And there's conflict and. Oh, so why don't we do them separately, to, same day, have the two people in there separate? Because one was one was the contract. And you said this is going to be a short meeting because it's two days before <laughs> Thanksgiving, right? Right. Because I'm going to be coming back from out of town to come. So. Yeah, it'll be short. Okay. But I, I think we all need to hear the same thing. Well, you and it, it's, absolutely. It, you, you know, when you're affecting so, theoretically yeah. or potentially if somebody's department, they yeah. should be part of the discussion. So okay, so we'll have. So we need both the supervisor for okay. first. Okay. To talk about the current process, I, or we might not need that. I Will don't you think still? we need him. Oh, I thought that's what you wanted. No. All right, just fill them. No. Oh. 
just Tony. <laughs> you said supervisor. I thought you meant Tony. Uh, okay. I, I when did. You said supervisor. I, I thought you Tony. meant the other one. Oh, all right. Okay, supervisor. You to, like to, to, to talk about the, the uh, yes. Okay. okay. But I also think following that to discuss what Ed and Cindy and I, I think your phone's ringing it. Okay, then, then and Phil. Then Phil should come in to talk about any potential changes to the, the, to the process of what we're doing. Okay, okay. That's what I was trying to sure. say. I don't know if I said it right. But. And I still don't know if I understand, I but I get it. who's going to be here. So. Uh, All right, yeah. so does anybody have anything else? Is that to be signed to? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Any further discussion? I'd made a motion. All those in favor to Aye. adjourn? Yes. Aye. Thank Except you, John. I think you have to sign.